Uh, call the February 5th, 2018 meeting to order. And uh, Judy, if you could do the roll call, please. Yes, Housh. Here. McQueen. Here. Hempfling. Here. Stokes. Here. Krieger. Here. Also present our village manager, Patty Bates. Chief of Police, Brian Carlson. Uh, not present is Melissa Van Zandt, who's out of the country presently. And I think that covers it. Oh, I'm sorry. Village solicitor, Chris Connard. Great. Wait, and who, who's the gentleman back there? <laughs> that, that guy. Ah, oh, that's our Chief Carlson. Yes, okay. Um, so uh, our first order of business, uh, very exciting. I believe we have a new clerk of courts to swear in. So uh, Mayor Canine, are you doing that? And uh, Ann Portinga? That okay, great. Okay. Ann, if you come up front. I wanted to do this in front of council simply because I wanted you all to have a chance to meet our new Anne, our new clerk of courts. Uh, we've had the same clerk for 30 years. June Allison is retiring, and it's a momentous day for the village with Mayor Fobert being in place for 26 years. We haven't done this in a long time, and I, we have a new face, and I wanted the folks at home to be able to see Anne and also you council people and those of you in the <coughs> audience to get to meet her. So Anne, we're going to swear you in. Okay. <laughs> yes, you can, please. And repeat after me. I solemnly swear or affirm, I solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution, that I will support the Constitution and will obey the laws of the United States and will obey the laws of the United States and of the state of Ohio. And of the state of Ohio. And that I will in all respects, that I will in all respects, observe the provisions of the charter, observe the provisions of the charter, and the ordinances of the village of Yellow Springs, and the ordinances of the village of Yellow Springs, and will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of clerk of courts, and will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of clerk of courts. Congratulations. All right. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, so you're welcome to stay. You're welcome to stay. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Do we have any announcements? No. Did you? I mean, I have the petitions. Oh, okay. Uh, I do have a few announcements. Um, I wanted to make sure that actually council and the village knew that the Yellow Springs Community Foundation did uh, donate to the Yellow Springs Clifton, Clifton Connector project. Um, so they have uh, given 7,000 for that preliminary enge engineering study. Um, we're still waiting to hear if the state is also going, going to give an appropriation for that project. So I thought that was cool. And it also relates to a piece of legislation that we have on the agenda. Um, also, uh, probably everybody already knows, but the uh, McKinney Chili Cook-Off is going to be February 17th at the high school starting at 4 p.m. That's always an amazing event. Great to support our schools. Um, I did want to give a big shout out to our own Johnny Burns. It's his birthday today. And uh, so we thank him for all the uh, great things he does for the village. Uh, that it's also Susie Young's birthday. Oh, is it really? Oh, she's not on Facebook. All right. So, and happy birthday to Susie Yant as well. Um, and uh, I did want to thank June for all her uh, great service to the village as well. Um, yeah, she's, uh, she's been here for a long time, and she's seen a lot of uh, mayor's courts. And finally, I wanted to make sure that everyone was aware that um, this is the 50th anniversary of the Scenic Rivers Act. Ohio was the first state to pass a, uh, a, a piece of legislation that recognizes scenic rivers. And um, there's going to be an event at the State House on February 28th from 3.30 to 5. If anybody wants to go, I'm going to be there. But it also occurred to me with the importance of the Little Miami River um, to our community that we might want to think about a resolution supporting that celebration. They're asking other municipalities to do that. and. Uh, I wanted to see what you thought. If so, I if we like that idea, I can draft something. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Cool. So then, uh, any other announcements? On to the consent agenda. So Judy. Oh, sorry. 
Yeah, I have some uh, comments on the agenda. So okay. There were a few things that I thought were unclear. Okay. So then, should yeah. we should we pull minutes. the minutes should we pull the minutes off the consent that, agenda? That then? is the consent. Agenda. <coughs> right. Okay. So we'll pull the minutes off and and uh, make those changes. Okay. Well, on page three, uh, down close to the bottom, about uh, three paragraphs up from where it says new business, it says, in response to questions from Krieger, Bowen explained. The phenomenon of age groups moving into older age groups with a projection. Um, so the oldest and low income groups increase concomitantly due to retirement. I just thought that was um, confusing. I mean, do other. Is, is I was going to say something, yeah. I mean, yeah. basically, I think what was he saying that people keep getting older and when they retire, their income goes down? Is that, isn't that what? That, that's what I recall. People mm -hmm. are aging up into retirement, and then, yeah, their incomes drop. Right. It's yeah. just, uh, if there's some way to say it a little, so it's a little clearer when someone is, yeah. someone in the future reading these. You know. mm -hmm. Then, on the next page, up at the top of the page, where it says, the Queen stated that she would like staff reports to be more useful and to perhaps use a spreadsheet with comparisons to previous months and years. Um, what I, 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 I didn't want, I don't want to have this generic statement that I want to see staff reports be more useful. How they can be more useful is when statistics are being given. For example, in the police report, if it says, you know, so many DUIs this month, so many break-ins, to actually have it on a spreadsheet that shows what it was like the last quarter, however many times, and compared to like the previous year or so. Because to me, just seeing statistics, so it applies to the police department, planning commission, and I think like there was one other. Well, you did say staff reports, so if you'd like that clarified, yeah, I no, can. No, it's not all staff reports. It's, it's whenever a staff report is giving statistics that change over time, mm -hmm. to have those statistics be put in a, a kind of spreadsheet so we can see the trends. A, compar a comparison yes. in some way. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, mayor's court is the other. Right. So it's. The police department and the planning and zoning were my two, and then the mayor's the court mayor's was the third. Well, I'll, I'll clarify that on these minutes. I, I'm not going to insert things you didn't say the last time, but I can clarify that to say that any staff reports which list statistics and then yes. clarify the, the remainder of that, and then obviously the discussion will go on this one. Okay. Then the third, th third sentence down. Hempfling suggested that council and the mayor overlap and suggested that your justice system task force would be involved in some way. I, I did not understand what that meant, what that means. Um, I don't know what I said back then, but uh, I know I was referencing the fact JSTF was set up by council and uh, there was directions about the mayor's court of course, we have some responsibilities and authority regarding the mayor's court, but that there is some overlap there. I think I was making some comment, but I don't know why I said it there. You mean that the mayor and the council have some? The JSTF has directive from council regarding, uh, from council, you know, regarding the mayor's court. Um, and I guess I was. Maybe that's enough. Maybe that's enough. I don't know. I was just commenting that there's some places where there's kind of an overlap of authority. Oh, overlap of authority. Yeah. Well, maybe that's what's missing. Hempling suggested <coughs> that council and the mayor overlap. I don't know. Authority? No, no, no. That was not what she meant. That there, yeah, it was a confusing statement, and I didn't want to assume what Judith meant by it, so I just kind of threw it down. <laughs> I mean, I didn't want to make an assumption that she was saying do this or do that specifically. So if we, if we want to clarify it, I, I was not entirely clear uh, as to what she meant by it, but, I, but, but it seemed like a significant thing to say, so I didn't want to omit. Are, are you clear what you meant, Judith? Did you? Uh, I mean, maybe we should just, you know, I don't, I mean, 
you and I want to work a little bit on the edit. I'm not sure what he said, so I don't know what I said was more clear than that, that he can just stand. Yeah, I mean, certainly. I, I just did not want to assume that you were saying something. I, I was commenting on the fact that we've given guidance. We've asked JSTF for, you know, we, we gave some direction to them about the mayor's court. There are some overlaps with Swarby, and so that's just something to be aware of. And, uh, I had intended to call Pam, but I've been kind of ill, so I haven't yet. Let, let me play with it, and I, you can sort of let me know if, okay. you, if I'm getting, sure. it, getting it right. Sure. I mean, that's what I was commenting on. So are we approving the minutes with clarifications, or are we <clears throat> bringing them back to the next meeting? You can you can certainly approve with clarifications. I think I'm I'm clear as to what everything needs to, to change, with the exception of just clarifying with Judith her statement that, he, that either she'd like to pull it all the way out, she's she's just not certain, or t to make it say what she meant it to say. So I, I think that's accurate to say. Okay. Approve with clarification. Kevin. And then uh, at the signature block at the bottom, still got Karen Wintrow's name. Oh, sure does. <clears throat> Good catch. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> okay, so I'll entertain a motion uh, to approve the minutes with clarifications. I move that we approve the minutes with the clarification on the three sentences. So moved. Okay. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Great. Okay, so let's review the agenda. Um, any changes that we need to make? Yes, I, I would like to make a change in old business. Oh, I lost that. Really. Um, <laughs> I'd like to change the order of old business. I'd like to have the housing needs assessment come first, and I'd like it to take 30 minutes, not 15, <clears throat> because there are three decisions that I would like council, uh, Judith and I, would like council to make. And I'd like it to come first because it impacts the goals, I think. And I think our thinking is clearer in the beginning than the end. So I'd like housing to come first and then the goals and then the board and commission, if that council is comfortable with that. I'm okay with that. Okay. Um, and yes, Kevin. Then in new business, I'd like to <clears throat> talk about just make space to talk about uh, the police guidelines. I feel like I've seen somewhere where there was going to be a discussion about that, and so I might. Yeah, Patty put it in her manager's report. Okay. Um, to do you want to add it to new business anyway, or wait and discuss it there? We can discuss it then. I can discuss okay. it then. Okay. Great. Um, and then also with respect to diversity hiring, um, th there's been some discussion, and, and I, so I won't go into it now, but I mean, I'm doing some things to try to help facilitate, you know, further outreach um, to communities, of diverse, to diverse communities uh, with our hiring practices. So I'd like to discuss that. Under new business? Yep. Okay. Um, Wait, can I? <clears throat> yes. I mean, I was gonna, uh, Kevin and I talked briefly about this, uh, Police Department guidelines. I mean, I feel like it should be maybe under new business, not because, because yeah. there could be a decision. I, I, I agree. Okay. Pull it out. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Okay. Well, remember, we do need to add our uh, nominations for all our commissions. Oh, yeah. Where does that happen? New business, because it's our first meeting. Um, okay. So if that's all there, let's uh, move on to petitions and communications. Marianne? Yes, there were um, three, well, no, there were four, um, four uh, communications. The one communication was actually submitted by Samantha Stewart, at least as far as I saw, regarding uh, Bryan Center rental policies. Where, Patty, where can people find these rental policies? How, what's, is it on our website? They should be on the website. Melissa was going to put them on the website. Okay. And if they can't get them on the website, what they can they, down. They can contact um, either Ruth Ann or Samantha Stewart. <coughs> so, 
So we've updated our rental policies for the for the Bryan Center. Uh, then Nadia Malarkey, who is on the Environmental Commission, who is uh, spearheading the Environmental Commission's work on natural landscaping and uh, omitting uh, the use of pesticides, herbicides, and chemical fertilizers. It has been organizing three presentations. The first one will be uh, a presentation by Nadia this Wednesday, uh, February 7th, at Antioch University Midwest, starts at 7.30, and the title is The Yellow Springs Pollinator Regeneration Project. This is a project that uh, Nadia had been working on, started a couple years ago, I think. It, it combines people learning about how to have natural landscapes and with having them be uh, recognized throughout the village so that neighbors can actually learn from each other on how to have natural landscapes. So if it's possible to, in the packet, put that up on the screen. Ju Judy, is that possible or is that just too too much of an issue? No, I'll carry on. I'll get it up there. Okay. So then the other piece of this work that uh, Nadia is doing, it involves bringing some people from outside of town, uh, Jay Feldman and Chip Osborne, who are uh, involved in Beyond Pesticides and, or, and Osborne Organics, two different organizations, to work with public and private uh, landscapers and people who have uh, lawns that they want to transition. They will be giving two, there will be two workshops, an all-day workshop on March 1st from 8.30 to 3.00 and then in that evening, a uh, public presentation. And both uh, are free, but the all-day workshop people have to register for. And I, I will announce that again, but I'd, I've asked Spencer to put that on channel five so that people can get it done. We could also put it on the Facebook page. Ah, uh, yes. So Spencer, do you do that, Spencer? Actually, he's an admin now, so we could definitely do that. Great, thank you. <clears throat> Then uh, another communication was uh, Kate Hamilton, who is resigning from HRC because of health concerns. Another communication was from Shernaz Reporter about tobacco-free Greene County. They're, they have regular meetings, and their next meeting is Monday, February 12th, from 1 to 2.30 at Ford Independence, which is located at 81 East Main Street in Xenia. And the work of that group is to, as the name implies, uh, encourage tobacco-free Green County and offer support for that. And I wanted to just pull out something which maybe, Patty, you had in your report. I'm not sure the pie chart of electrical outages. Oh, I'm not sure who... who that, it goes, it goes with my, my end of year report, yes. Okay, well, I thought I'd just make an announcement now because I thought it was interesting. It, it's a pie chart that shows what are the various causes of electrical outage in the village. <coughs> and trees <laughs> falling on wires, I guess, or knocking over poles, is 32%. That's the biggest factor. And what do you think is the next? Squirrels. This is why electricians <laughs> hate squirrels. Which have to do with trees, too. <laughs> but, so that squirrels are 24%. So you take trees and squirrels, and that's over half. And then the rest are, you know, a myriad of other causes. But I thought that was pretty interesting. So I am done. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I always like talking about squirrels. <laughs> I do, actually. Um, okay, let's move on to uh, legislation. We have two ordinances that are not emergency ordinances, so they will get two readings. And uh, Judy, could you read um, Ordinance 2018-04 in full? Yes, this is approving the creation of a fund for utility overpayment and disbursement. 
whereas the Village of Yellow Springs accepts payments for each of its utilities, and whereas customers often overpay the utility bills, and those funds need to be held until they can be applied to a subsequent billing, and whereas the following enterprise fund entitled Utility Overpayment Fund shall be created for this purpose. Now, therefore, counsel for the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, hereby ordains that. Section 1, the Finance Director is hereby authorized to create the Utility Overpayment Fund. Section 2, the Finance Director is hereby authorized to receive funds into the Utility Overpayment Fund as directed when necessary due to overpayment and to make expenditures therefrom as the law allows. Section 3, this ordinance shall be in effect in full force at the earliest date allowed by law. Thank you. Uh, I'll take a motion. I move. Second. Okay. okay. Um, so uh, we will have the public hearing uh, at the next meeting, but does anyone have any questions or comments? Just a tiny typo in the title. Mm -hmm. Not if you had the one that's Let the new one. There we go. All the corrections. I, was, <laughs> I was grasping for my moment for alliteration. <laughs> there, there were actually several, several typos, but the good call, because we missed it the first time, clearly. Yeah, yeah there, was, there was a really interesting one, actually, that we caught. Um, <laughs> Uh, any questions or comments from citizens? Okay, uh, come up to the podium, please, and state your name. Uh, my name is William Toll, and I, I just like to make everybody aware of organized stalking. Uh, I'm okay, actually, um, we will have citizens concerns right after this. So, can I ask you to uh, wait? About yeah. Sure. Okay, thanks. Um, but you'll be the first one up. Um, Okay, uh, so, uh, well, let's go ahead and take a vote. Um, Judy, could you do the roll call? Absolutely. McQueen? Yes. Krieger? Yes. Stokes? Yes. Hempfling? Yes. Housh? Yes. Okay, and um, our second ordinance, 2018 05, uh, approving creation of a fund to house revenues obtained for the Yellow Springs Clifton Connector project. Um, I'll go ahead and just briefly explain this one, and then we can uh, 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 talk about, well, actually, let me ask for a motion first. Moved. Second. Okay. Um, so this is pretty much self-explanatory as well. Um, because we received funds from the Community Foundation, um, uh, 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 Melissa has to set up an account to put those funds somewhere um, for this project. Any questions or comments? Questions or comments from citizens? Okay, Judy, can you call the roll? Yes, Hempfling. Yes. Stokes. Yes. McQueen. Yes. Krieger. Yes. Housh. Yes. Okay. okay, and that will get a public hearing at our next meeting. Okay. Yeah, I'd yes. like to, there was something I omitted. You know, I, I said that um, Kate Hamilton was resigning from HRC, but I neglected to uh, express our thanks to mm. Kate. Kate. I'm not sure how long Kate has been on, Chrissy probably knows, three, three years. Um, but Kate has been a, not only a stalwart member of HRC, um, but she's pushed, she's been very involved in various activities that HRC has sponsored. She is, uh, has been the liaison to the Justice Task Force. She's been a really strong mm -hmm. member of HRC and she was very sad to, uh, to leave, but she's, had some health concerns, she felt she needed to cut back. Mm. And so, Judy, you will write, will you write a thank you? Yes. Thing. Um, and she is remaining on the JSTF. I did ask her that. The Justice she System Task Force. Good. Remaining. Great. Okay, so now's the time in the agenda for uh, things that are not on the agenda, that is citizen concerns. So, uh, if you'd like to come back up to the mic. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to make everybody aware of uh, something called organized stalking, where uh, I, moved, I moved away from uh, Xenia. There's uh, drug dealers next door, and uh, from what I could gather, uh, police were being paid off, which was involved, and uh, I was followed everywhere I went. Uh, it's continued for quite a long time, and... Uh, Recently, I've seen one of them people that was involved with that uh, in town this past week, and it's kind of disturbing because they're usually not around here. And uh, I have their license plate number and a picture of them. And uh, there's one other person I know is involved with it that's in the community. They work on the weekends at a local shop. And 
uh, I'd just like to make a, help make sure Yellow Springs is a safe place for anybody who needs to be there to be safe, uh, no matter who, what race they are or, or where they come from. And uh, I, I shouldn't have to leave the country, you know, if I have no safe place to go to. So uh, I thought I'd come here and share that information. Have, have Thank you, you. Have you spoken to the chief or the police department yet? Not much, but uh, a little bit about it. But uh, um, I, I just don't know what all to do about it because uh, if there's corruption going on, then eventually it gets back to the bad guys. You know, so then it uh, makes things worse for me. So I just want to stay out of it and. Uh, um, I just want to be safe and, and do all the good I could do for other people. And uh, I'm doing what I can to help people around here, around the community, and uh, I hope everybody can be safe. And uh, thanks for listening. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, any other citizen concerns? Chrissy? I was told that at next council meeting there's going to be discussion about the utilities round uh, roundup being a fund set up for people who are having problems paying their utility bill, um, but I don't see it on the agenda for future no. items. Yeah, it was. I was confused about that too. It, it was the ordinance we just passed. It's <coughs> not the utility right. roundup. I'm wondering and, about the other and, one. That's more. And, more and that will not. We won't bring that back until the new software system is up and running and all the glitches are out sometime this year I don't know when that will be. so this other ordinance for is just for people who already own who own homes or what I'm oh. just I'm just we've been throwing this idea sure. around and it's a very important thing I mean I paid somebody's utility bill this month and I've had a couple of other people contact me since then mm -hmm. so clearly this is something that is very important and needed in the community and I'm just wondering when is it ever going to be implemented if the software is in use enough that we're passing ordinances to work with the software on this other issue about utilities being overpaid then why isn't it in use enough to start working on a policy for figuring out how to apply a roundup so that people can help other people with their utility bills right before you explain the, the legislation though <clears throat> so Chrissy uh, you're right it's not on future agenda items but um, what I when we get to that point in the agenda I'm planning to advocate for an action plan on how we implement this to come to the meeting on February 20th okay. it won't be implemented by then but I, I think we should prioritize it so I'm gonna advocate for that when we talk about future agenda items so, so um, the, the legislation that is on there tonight, um, first of all, the new software isn't online yet. Right now, we're, it's called mirroring. We're running our old software and our new software side by side to make sure that everything has gotten shifted over. And it, we hope to be running strictly on the new software by sometime, I believe Melissa's report says mid-February. Um, but what this uh, new fund does, the old software, if you paid extra on your bill, say your bill was, um, you know, $95 and you decided you were going to make it 100 even, that $5 would automatically go to as a credit to your uh, electric, um, the, the electric part of your bill under the old software. Um, this new software will not allow that. So what we're required to do is create a fund where that overpayment can go and wait. So it says, Chrissy Cruz $5, and then the next month when you get billed, it gets credited to your account, and it gets spread across all of the funds. So it's just a holding where it goes in one month and comes back out to pay your next bill. Goes in one month, comes back out to pay, you know. So it kind of sounds like maybe the old software was a little bit more efficient. Then. Um, it, it depends on how you look at it. The new software has a lot more benefits than the, that the old software doesn't have. So. And this is just one of the small Sorry. things that we have okay. to do. Okay. okay. Well, that was my concern. I just want to see this program implemented. And um, like I said, I have paid the utility bill for one person this month, and I've been contacted by two other people. And last year, we helped a total of 27 families that needed assistance with their utility bills. 
And that wasn't all of the people that contacted me, that was just the ones that we were able to help. So this is something that's very important to the community. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, I was going to say, um, in our goals, I mean, uh, when I realized how many shutoffs, you know, notices that uh, the village um, is putting out, particularly in the winter, and I know there are rules, you know, because we're small, we're not <coughs> one of the large public utilities, um, we're not bound by these rules, but there are rules, um, you know, that other utility companies are bound by, which, um, for instance, uh, protects citizens in the winter, you know, you can't just turn them off. And I think we need to look at this. <laughs> um, I think we need to look at, I know, you know, what options we have in assisting people who are having difficulty paying their bills. Um, you know, I think we need to look at that. And I know the, the roundup is one, one, one thing, but it seems like uh, we maybe need to look at some of our policies around, you know, shutoffs in the winter, for example, um, and look at what those other programs are. Now, who's going to do that? Um, and so that's a question. Who's going to One more thing. I, I was, I, in regards to that, when I had some difficulties last summer, um, I was told that if I sent a letter from my doctor, they would not be able to turn off my electricity because of non-payment, because I need air conditioning for my asthma and COPD. But then uh, Melissa told me that they could still shut up off my water, which water is every bit as important as electricity, especially to someone who's um, suffering from difficulties. So I would totally agree with you on that, Judith, because the, just there seems to be only one option now. If you get behind on your bill, you can go and apply for a, um, for a, a payment plan to spread it out over several months. I think there should be some other options as well. I just don't think that's that one thing clearly is not working for everybody. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other citizen concerns? Okay, well, we do not have any special reports, so that brings us to old business. And so, Marianne, do you want to start us off with the housing needs assessment update? Yes. So, in uh, last year in September, in um, 2017, we council established uh, a committee which we called, or at least are now calling the Village Manager Housing Advisory Board. And that that board uh, last year uh, looked at what we felt we wanted in terms of housing needs assessment. We uh, developed an RFP, Patty developed an RFP. We reviewed the proposals. We chose Bowen of Columbus. Bowen did the housing needs assessment and made that presentation at our, our last council meeting. And I think people were very pleased, pleased with the quality of the report and the details of the report. What we didn't do and said we would do next was to have some community forums, some community conversations about the, the issue of housing in Yellow Springs. And we decided to do that as our next step. So uh, the housing board met, has met. We have tentatively scheduled these sessions to happen in March and that there would be four of them. And one of them would be at the Baptist Church, one will be at Mills Lawn, one at the Senior Center, and one at the Bryan Center. And our plan, assuming uh, council approves the other, this and the other things that I'm going to discuss, will be to start working on this. Involve the mediation program in helping um, and maybe some other people. So, what we realized is that we want to come back to council and have council, what's the word? <laughs> have council approve the continued functioning of this board, uh, at least for the time being, as the technical support to council and staff to work on housing issues. So we're making one, the request that council approve that. 
Second request is that council, that we now, today, discuss what we think would be the best question or focus for these groups. What we will do in these groups is provide sort of a snapshot of the housing needs assessment. Not the whole 400 pages, but the most important points. And maybe have that information easily accessible and available before people come to the meetings. But we wanted to provide people with some kind of focus for discuss, discussing the results of the survey. Now, we've already had over 500 people respond to the survey, in, to the survey in the past, 500 villagers, which is probably, what, about one sixth or fifth of the adults in, in Yellow Springs. And clearly, everyone, uh, everyone's response mirrored the findings of the housing needs assessment. But people haven't really had a chance to talk together. And so it seems like it's important for citizens to be able to have a chance to come together, talk about what do they, what do they think village government should do. do. Do citizens want the trajectory that the village is heading in now, which is we're getting older, we're getting richer, we're getting whiter, and we have a whole lot of people who are um, struggling with housing. And uh, is that what we want? And if we don't, uh, what do we want? But we, I'd like council to have a discussion about what is there one question, a couple questions that would make sense for uh, people to talk about, or do you want to empower Judith and me to, and the, the housing board to come up with a question or discussion topic? Um, and the last thing that I want to uh, say before I shut up <laughs> about this is that there are various things that Village Council can do and in regard to housing. And w some of the strategies were laid out in the housing needs assessment. One of the strategies is called inclusionary zoning. And inclusionary zoning, uh, which we could do as an ordinance, w would say that for every development that has a certain number of houses, let's say 10 units, a certain percentage have to be affordable. And that, that's it in a nutshell. Now, there are various ways of doing inclusionary zoning, and Liz Voigt, who is one of the citizens on our board, has put uh, me in touch with a or national organization that has a lot of information on inclusionary zoning, other communities that have done it, they can offer technical assistance. So we have the resources to start working on this, but I would like council's approval for that. So the three things that I'm asking for council now are to approve the village manager's housing advisory board to continue acting as technical assistance to council and staff. Two, to, um, to say that you would like us to start looking into inclusionary zoning and bring it, we bring it back to council. And three, to uh, weigh in on what focus the housing groups should have. You want me to say oh, There you go. Yeah, <laughs> when that's, that's very, these are great points. So yeah, go ahead, Judith. Well, I was gonna say, so it seems like the place to start maybe is, um, uh, maybe it is to start with the, the first, uh, the next piece of work, which is these forums. Mm -hmm. And um, to me, the most, <coughs> the, the purpose is for people to really get the information. I mean, there was a great article in the Yellow Springs News, mm -hmm. um, you know, drawing people's attention to, you know, where they can access the housing needs assessment, uh, the PowerPoints of the housing needs assessment, you know, looking at the executive summary in particular, which is a simple, uh, is a much simpler summation of, of the findings. Um, so that will be the purpose, but in terms of the discussion there, yeah, we wanted input from council in terms of, um, you know, <coughs> what sort of questions should be asked of the community. Well, um, I'd like not to uh, skip over, if you will, the issue of the, the point of how to present the material 
I mean, we don't, well, I have nothing against 400 pages uh, being present in the room. Um, and when you say you want to do the highlights, um, just reading the executive summary, it was, I think, really, if you really want to absorb the information, almost nearly impossible to go through the executive summary without referring deep you know, into the document. Um, and so that's one approach is to start with the executive summary. Another would be to take Mr. Bowen's um, PowerPoint and uh, indicate where in the report, the 400 page report, you can find backup data for everything that's in the PowerPoint. You know, so um, again, I'd like to make sure that we're doing the best job possible of making the information available, uh, but you cannot do that as, as nice as it sounds to the exclusion of the 400 page report. So it needs to be there, it needs to be available. Folks need to be able to refer to it to, to get a good understanding of whatever highlights um, you are bringing to the front. Well, and another question is, who gives the presentation? So we're talking about three? Or is four. It four. Four um, forums. <clears throat> and um, I had suggested that the committee would do it. Sorry, I have a stiff neck. <laughs> so, okay. uh, Good point. <laughs> but, uh, and, but there was some concern expressed by one of our members, you know, that it had to be a per totally objective person, but I wasn't so clear that that mattered. What's important is that it be accurate to mm -hmm. the housing needs assessment. I mean, to me, that's the, uh, this is not the place for a big political debate, mm -hmm. I don't think. It's just trying to understand what is hap what, what's going on. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, it doesn't have to be us. I thought it could make sense. Um, but, I, but if it isn't us, who is it? <laughs> you, so that's you, another question. So I'd you, like to hear from council on that, uh, thoughts on that. Judith, I, I think the point was not so much that it needed to be objective as it needed to be consistent, that the message <laughs> at all four of the forums needs to be consistent and the same Well, message. I think they need to be so, accurate to the housing yeah, assessment. Yeah. That's the most important and so thing. That, so. but, uh, was, but yeah, it, it sort of leaves me puzzling about, well, who's going to do it then? Because that's kind well, of a big order. It's, it seems like the committee, to me, I mean, you, you have the most intimate knowledge. Um, and I think a way for it to be consistent is we develop a one-pager. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I realize there's a lot to digest. But, we, you know, in order for these community conversations to be effective, we got to, you know, create those bullet points for the informative piece. Because I think what's more interesting is the engagement piece, which I assume mediation is going to help with. I saw that being noted. So, and, and, and I have spent two days, Friday and today, actually creating bullet points from the presentation, mm -hmm. and it's still seven plus pages long. Okay. So, I mean, that's that's what I did most of the day, Friday and today, was go through and create the salient bullet points from the PowerPoint presentation. And I can certainly reference those back, as Kevin said, to, to the report because it's a simple enough task to find where each one of those sections is, is uh, referenced. But I think that if you want to work from the eight pages, then you could certainly work from the eight pages, but you would have to go pretty quickly through that presentation. So what I was planning on doing next is taking them and see if anything can be combined into a similar bullet point. Mm -hmm. uh, some more bullet points can be combined into, a, you know, to cut it down from seven plus pages to maybe three or four that can be presented easily enough at a forum. Okay. Wait, I'm confused. Uh, were you working off the PowerPoint? Mm -hmm. You're working off, and you, but you were, how many pages were in the PowerPoint? <laughs> it was like 40 or something. 40 like pages. 40 slides. And you've mm -hmm. it was condensed <coughs> it to. What I did was I took each of the primary. Um, sections that he presented and made that a header and then put several bullet points under each one of those as to percentages and trends and demographics and whatever that particular section dealt with. Lisa? Um, you know, it strikes me that the PowerPoint really does have a depth of content mm -hmm. that exceeds that executive summary mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. plus it's a PowerPoint, right. which lends itself to presentation. Um, one of the things that comes to mind, you know, when I look at these um, potential questions that are in this document, what do you want for Yellow Springs in terms of housing? Do you want to shift the trajectory, et cetera? 
is that each of those questions uh, may have their own sort of subset of, of information from the report that's more related to one question than another. And so, for example, if, if we're asking people to shift the, you know, do you want to shift the trajectory, the background information that would be highlighted would be anything about what the trajectory seems to be, mm -hmm. which is a fairly clean subset of the report. Mm -hmm. So, um, <coughs> boy, I know you could spend, uh, all of us probably could spend the rest of our lives trying to figure out ways to recut and form that report. but. If we, um, I do like those three questions. I think those are three excellent questions. And uh, maybe if we thought of uh, organizing the information to say to a person, here's our question, this is what you might want to consider from the report in order to inform your perspective on this question, that might be another way to group the information. Maybe. <coughs> Does that make sense? No. Okay, so for example, um, I think there's some information in the report specifically about the trajectory in which Yellow Springs is heading, yeah. right? Um, a lot of the information in the report isn't really related to that, or, or it's way more background detail. Yeah. So in, in support of that question, there would maybe only be five bullet points um, in support of a question well, what do you want council to know about your concerns? That's, that's open-ended. But um, what do you want for Yellow Springs in terms of housing? That's also a perspective question, not so much grounded in data from the report. Didn't the um, survey do a good job in at least answering that question about what folks want in terms of housing? And I'm, and I'm not passing judgment on the yeah. questions. I'm just. I, I, I don't think that that did. I mean, I think the survey people agreed we uh, don't have, that people are struggling, a lot of people are struggling, that there's a need for affordable. Well, I'm not even sure if that people said there's a, that there's a problem about affordable housing. I mean, I, I, I'm just going to say that I think most, most people who live in Yellow Springs live here because they want to be here. And they want to be here because there are certain things in this community that they value. And the trajectory that is, we're heading on, uh, setting aside the fact, um, the trajectory <coughs> we're heading on is shifting the community away from a lot of those values. So I, I don't, I, I and, and the village government up to this point has not taken a real active role in housing, which is not unusual or very small. So now, I anticipate we're going to take a very active role in housing starting this year. And so not only, I think, do we want people to be more familiar with the, the data, I think, I think we need to have, we need to know that citizens are behind village government doing something. Mary, I, may I make yes. a suggestion? Yeah. Um, we are meeting, uh, is it Monday or Tuesday? I can't remember which day um, for the yeah. for the advisory yeah. board. What if I take the the bullet point data, the questions that we have here, reorganize it a little bit as Lisa suggested, and then maybe we can bring back to council um, on the twentieth uh, a bit a bit more solid idea of <coughs> how we would recommend proceeding, and council can, mm. can maybe. I mean, if, if, if these are the questions, if everyone agrees that these are the questions that we need to answer, then... Um. My feeling is, I mean, I was at that meeting when these questions were developed, but now that I look at them, honestly, I think to try to reorganize that PowerPoint, I'm kind of loath to do that. I think, I mean, I, Brian, you said you thought the biggest and most important point was the conversation. I think people need to be grounded in what actually the PowerPoint sh or the uh, housing needs assessment shows. When we got done listening to it, we didn't have much to say because it's a lot of information. And quite honestly, at least for me, I don't know how other people felt, it's kind of shocking in a sense. I mean, we realize we've got a serious problem. 
and to ask people to immediately tell us what they think we should do about it, I don't think it's going to be very meaningful. I don't like the idea of trying to reorganize that PowerPoint that our professional guy put together. I think it's got to get smaller because it's, it's, it's very dense, but trying to make it a little simpler and then just make sure people understand. People are going to start to say things about what that leads them to think, but I don't know that we want to reorganize it around these questions. Let me um, clarify my recommendation that had nothing to do with reorganizing the PowerPoint. I was thinking more just in terms of a one-pager mm -hmm. focused on data that a person might want to have in support of specific questions. Right. Really simplifying it. Um, so I was not, I was not recommending um, reorganizing that PowerPoint. Um, but so you were thinking we should stick to the PowerPoint. But well, it might be available, but you know, I don't know if it's presented. But um, one thing I did hear, though, that perhaps another question to be considered is, what do you see as the role of your local government in addressing housing? But you know, I feel like again, I ran on a particular platform around housing. People voted for me. I don't want to keep having that discussion over and over again. Right. I think we need to move forward. That's my own personal view. I've got a note here um, that just disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it, it's there. <laughs> but um, there it is. It's under there. Um, to Marianne's point, uh, it's nice that we make the, have the presumption that we're going to do something uh, about housing. I think something foundational should be a commitment on our part that we are going to do something. I mean, anecdotally, I think we sort of expected that the report would say what it said. Mm -hmm. But now that we've got the proof, um, I, I think there ought to be a firm commitment, not saying that we're going to do yeah. an exact thing in an exact place. Mm -hmm. uh, but another of my very tiny notes uh, uh, one was, are we committed, so that, this, so that this is not just an academic exercise. Mm -hmm. um, uh, another thing is, and every time I make it big enough to read, it disappears. Lisa's my, my witness. It's right under there. Um, so I'll go by memory. Um, do we know, and it's a simple question for some of us, uh, I'm going to play the new card, the new guy card as often as I can. Um, do we know every piece of village-owned property that might be available, you know, mm -hmm. for building? Yes. And I think that needs to be part of the discussion. If if it's not, and I'm sure it's, I presume it's buried somewhere in the in the report. But that certainly ought to be part of the question. Um, and and I'll come back if I can ever read my other question. This is oh, there it is. Um, right. So one thing that Mr. Bowen said is that the PowerPoint could be used as a marketing tool to wave in front of prospective builders saying, hey, here's an opportunity uh, for you to do something good. These are the kind of things we want. This is where we want these things done. Are we already thinking about how we would use the material from a marketing perspective to reach out to builders? Uh, because we can talk about the theory of building um, I have been thinking about this a fair amount, mm -hmm. and I have in draft form my own list of about a, a dozen things that village government could do. Mm -hmm. That would be one thing. But I think we're needing to move step by step, and I think the first thing that we need to focus on is these uh, community conversations, community forums, and the other thing that I want that I want council to agree to uh, is to have a to, to look at inclusionary zoning. The mm -hmm. reason why I think inclusionary zoning needs to be right up front is because it'll take us some time, if we assume we agree to have such an ordinance, to get one in place that we think will work. And properties are going to be coming up, and I want that ordinance to be there before some of the larger developments start. Do we need a motion and a vote to move in that direction, or simply a general agreement at this table? I think a great, in terms of inclusionary zoning piece, I think just an agreement because we would bring something to council to look at. You know. Yeah, because you, your point was that you wanted us, you, your question was whether you 
whether we as council wanted the committee to investigate yes. uh, uh, inclusionary zoning as a, as a possibility. Yeah. So why don't we at least tick off <clears throat> two of the three things, which I think. Right, or maybe we're close to f figuring out how to resolve the third. So, um, y you know, I, I wanna add, as I listen to this conversation, um, I guess I, I, I'm gonna, I do think it, the informational piece is important, but again, I, I think that's half of what these community conversations are. So I, I do think that, you know, I mean, just like what we're calling it, eliciting that information. I, I hear two main questions. One of them is, what kind of village do you want us to have? And this is where I like what Lisa said about packaging information that I don't believe we need to have this deep dive that you know we can highlight some of the statistics and I think we can capture that pretty well. And then, what did I write for the second one? How do we get there with village housing policy and actions. Mm -hmm. And I do think, again, we can pull things out of the PowerPoint and the report that highlight some recommendations that were made and whatnot to get people started. Um, I expect people will have lots of questions that they'll ask, they'll want more information, um, and the discussions you know, can certainly continue. But if we're thinking about a, you know hour and a half to two hour kind of community conversation, I think we gotta be really mindful of how much data there is. And at the end of the day, we're gonna use that report to justify the policies and actions we take, right? And so, so essentially I agree that we need to provide the context, there needs to be a certain level of data, but I don't think that should be the focus, the, the only focus of those sessions. Um, and then uh, Patty did remind me that we also need to think about planning commission, you know, in our steps. Um, because I, I agree that you know as we're going through this, um, you know, capturing the you know uh, a better understanding of where the community is coming from, then starting to think about you know bringing it back to what we can do policy-wise, you know, with planning commission and whatnot, and then getting to that marketing step, and that to me is another interesting thing to look at too, is what what is the timeline going to be for these activities. I, um, so, you know, the in terms of the inclusionary zoning, I'm, I mean, I know Mary Ann thinks we need to make we need to complete that this spring, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, this is going to involve uh, not just our committee and talking to some housing people about inclusionary zoning, but talking to Chris, for example, um, you know, about you know legal questions related to that. Uh, given the time frame, given that we believe there's I mean, one thing, you know, how do we influence, you know, Glass Farm, we can really, in conversation with the community, decide what to do with that. We can go look for the developers. We can, you know, to meet, you know, certain parameters that we can, you know, decide upon. But private property that comes to the market, I don't know how we influence that development in a way that, you know, if we have identified certain needs, how do we influence that? Inclusionary zoning is the one thing. And so if our time frame is we want something on the books by end of April, okay. I mean, yeah, it's mm -hmm. coming up pretty quick. And so what's it going to take? And, you know, we're going to have some decisions to make. What percentage, you know, for example, uh, would include? the inclusionary zoning, what cost of the housing. There's some actually complicated questions we're going to have to make decisions on, and, we, and it's going to be a fairly short timeline. So I think, I guess, so the committee, are you thinking the committee with staff, um, do we have the resources that we need to be looking further in our current? Well, I have an appointment to talk with Denise mm -hmm. next week, and um, we have um, this organization that I've, I sent you the information and a person there um, is willing to talk with us and you know I haven't pursued it more than than that and and there are other communities we have a list of some other small communities that have done this there's no community in Ohio at this point that has inclusionary zoning some states some states at the state level encourage it or have legislation that supports it Ohio doesn't I think Columbus is just now considering it someone told me that hmm. but 
co coming back, is council comfortable with having the village manager's housing advisory board continue to function as the uh, technical support for council and staff? Definitely. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> And uh, so we got that. And is council comfortable with us pursuing getting information to bring back to council about inclusionary zoning? Yes. 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 But right, we're we're going to get information and discuss it. Right. Yeah. We're not right because this is sometimes a point of you know confusion. Is are we saying that we've decided to adopt this policy or not? So, but no, I, I'm not saying that. Right. I'm saying and that I, we would bring information. Definitely. For and me. Yeah. so where are we then with the community forums? I'd like Patty's suggestion of um, we had I think we discussed some ideas and the committee refining that and and then we talk about it on the 20th okay. I'm good with that and I don't know if we actually answered the question about who should present but or well, I didn't we say can, anything we but can the committee but, can continue to talk about it okay I, I don't but I want to, I'd like to see the committee present at the forums man, manage the forums because you guys okay. have a vested interest uh -huh. in doing that, and, I, and s certainly in general, you say, well, you want someone that that's you know doesn't have a vested interest in it. But uh, I think we're all interested in this, so I don't think you can find anyone uh, that's completely not vested, and I don't think we need someone completely uh, unbiased, if you will, you know, to facilitate. I, I trust the folks that I see listed. Um, in, in the committee to do a good job with that. Sure. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it sounds to me like that concern was also just not trying to lead the discussion in a certain way, but, you know, present information, get input. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Presumably the village mediation would have a facilitator, maybe a recorder or something like mm -hmm. that. <coughs> um, were there any questions or comments from citizens? Okay. And uh, how about any other comments from council? All right, well, this is excellent. Um, I love that we're uh, making this a priority. And that kind of rolls into uh, our next discussion, which is about 2018 goals. And um, <clears throat> I guess um, I'm supposed to hook up this HDMI thing to my computer because um, I promised that I would show something related to getting uh, an option for getting more citizen feedback. Um, but we do have the 2017 goals, uh, and we have reviewed those a bit, both in our retreat and at our last meeting. Um, did you find it? Um, so I thought, I guess I actually I wanted to start with the village values for a minute and um, <laughs> just raise an issue that there are two things that one of which we talked about last year was <coughs> do we um, I guess highlight affordability and prioritize it more in our village values which are you know at the core of the goals and the policies and that we do so um, so I do want to think about that and where that might go. Um, I think that it could be incorporated in an existing value. And the other thing which relates to something that Kevin added to the agenda and I've been thinking about as well is um, in our value about being a um, which one an employer. Yes, value number two. Um, talking, articulating that we are going to be proactive about uh, promoting diverse hiring, um, and uh, I think those are two things that we should consider in the values. So I haven't come up with the exact language, but I wanted to put that out there because it may affect how we think about our specific goals. Um, I'd like to say something. So I've been thinking about the goals, and I've written, um, I've been writing down some things about it, and, um, I, and apropos to the values, so, and, and first of all, I appreciate that we have values, and I imagine that you were, were you involved in that? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, probably not a lot of communities have that. Uh -huh. So, um, I do yes, think affordability should be listed somewhere in the value statement as a value. 
then well, then we would have goals and strategies to achieve it. I also would like to add anti-racism to um, a value. You know, last year when we were doing the police guidelines, I that term I was not familiar with, and it struck me as uh, very negative. But um, since then, I have been educating myself, and. I, and today, I looked up the definition. So I want to read that definition, which is from the Calgary Anti-Racism Education in University of Calgary. Anti-racism is the active process of identifying and eliminating racism by changing systems, organizational structures, policies, and practices, and attitude so that power is redistributed and shared equitably. So I, I think that anti-racism gets deeper than just saying diversity. So that's why I think that should be included. Mm -hmm. And the third thing that I think should be moved from a goal or strategy to a value is fiscal sustainability. So those are my comments on values. Wait, what is it? You want to move it? To a the value. The fiscal sustainability uh, as a value, and then if we have certain goals or strat, well, not. <coughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, it's something that we should have. It doesn't seem like. Right. I mean, we talk well, about we talk the about responsible, responsible fiscal yeah. framework, yeah. but. I mean, so all of these these three things I think could be inserted in existing. Okay. Yes. I agree. Or I would support that. Okay. Um, so that's one thing that. Uh, you know, I, I would be willing to work with, I don't know, Judith, since you were part of crafting these village values, we could maybe work together on a new draft for our second discussion. <laughs> um, and, and by the way, uh, the plan is to continue this discussion on the 20th um, so that we do, you know, uh, get goals in substance soon. Um, so I thought maybe the, ne the next thing we might do with this discussion is just have each council member talk about some priorities for 2018. And obviously, there may be some existing goals that are going to carry over. And maybe it's going to change quite a bit. And Lisa, I don't know if you're comfortable with starting, but maybe we just go down the line. Yeah, well, um, you know, a, a priority for me this year certainly has to do with, with the housing. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that relates to um, a couple of the values. And one of the challenges for me is that they're very intertwined, and that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, but they're also very compound sentences. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yes. So I'm still trying to kind of parse them, them all out. Um, but I think housing um, is a really important goal, and I think it touches multiple values. Mm -hmm. So I think as much as possible, um, it's more, I, I would like to set a number of goals that we can really achieve, right? Yeah, okay. Which for me means maybe this is an awful lot, right? The, how many are there? The six, five, ten, something like that. So um, I think that if we can articulate a goal around our work in housing, and then have that link to several of the values, that that's going to be something um, really important. I also strongly <coughs> support integrating the terminology of anti-racism. Um, that is language that goes um, stronger. It's, it's much stronger. And um, uh, But I, then I also wonder about some of the other inclusion issues, like um, sexual orientation and you know that it doesn't get just caught up in the wash so that our statements become overly I mean it's a weird word to use vanilla you know what I mean that they start to read like kind of mom and apple pie mm -hmm. but I'm I it's very important to me um, that we move away or continue to maintain um, a, a cultural life in Yellow Springs that's not simply white middle class culture. That the activities of the village, that the um, uh, what we see when we go downtown, that the people that we see, that the activities that are going on, 
uh, represent uh, diverse cultures. I think that's part of what will attract people to want to be in Yellow Springs in addition to a range of housing. So that's something that you maybe some people, some of you know, is a focus for me and why I'm very excited to be on the uh, Arts and Culture Commission. So I think that's a real focus for me this year. Um, I'll, you know, all these things are important. So I don't want to, because I'm not bringing up environment, I don't want anyone to think that doesn't mean I care about the environment. But I'll focus on those two and pass the baton. Great. Kevin? Well, I think I'm going to become known as the implicit bias guy. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, Patty and I have had some discussions um, about um, implicit bias training, cultural awareness, cultural competence um, training. And I know Chief Carlson has ex expressed the desire um, to do um, something in that in that vein. Um, so I've already begun um, discussions with a couple of, uh, well, two literally, um, service providers that could come local. Uh, someone that's at Wright State University and someone that's at University of Dayton. Um, they could come and do, you know, implicit bias, cultural competence, training, um, you know, not just for the police. Now, I think whenever we hear it lo locally lately, you, we think we're talking about the police. I, I think I'd like for all village staff, uh, including uh, police, and uh, council members uh, to be involved uh, with this uh, implicit bias cultural competency training because I think we do it we all need it um, and I think the moment you say well I'm not biased that means you need <laughs> <laughs> some, some bias training um, so that's um, something I think I want to uh, focus on um, just as, as a village goal um, and that, that can present itself in I think a couple of different ways, but I think we'll start with getting this training in. And, and I don't think we should consider doing a, a one and done. Um, you know, let's spend half a day talking about something and see you in five years. I think we need to do it and then plan on uh, coming back together and seeing uh, what, we've, what we've learned. So that's just an approach. Uh, so I'm getting into the tactics. Um, so, Cultural competence, implicit bias, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I'll right. pause there. Okay. Judith? Um, just a little addition to what Kevin said. Um, this idea, which I brought last year, and I talked, you know, we had, I had one meeting uh, with Patty and Ruthann about this idea of uh, diversity hiring practices. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just, you know, there's a lot out there on the web about just uh, simple steps that a, a organization like our village government and village uh, organization can do around its hiring. It's not complicated, it's thoughtful, and so I think that would build on the implicit bias training that Kevin talked about um, and uh, I went through the goals having been on the council um, I mean one of my thoughts is uh, environmentalism has been a very high uh, focus of council for several years we've got an electric uh, electric um, what's the word I want uh, portfolio mm -hmm. that is over 90 percent renewable as mm -hmm. a result of that uh, there's only so much we can do in a year, and I do feel like, you know, that, for example, the focus, uh, so I'm wondering if, you know, so sometimes these come to the surface, so housing is going to be, you know, a focus, uh, you know, cultural competence is going to be a focus this year. Some other things may have to s sort of fall down a little bit, not that we're not committed, uh, but just to, so that would be a way to me of trying to, not get too many goals more than we can handle. I do want to note the new water plant is up and running. Mm -hmm. uh, so in terms of that first goal, I mean that was a big uh, job and staff was very, you know, had a lot of work involved with that. Um, 
I know there's the water protection plan. Again, I feel like maybe that needs to not be the highest priority this year. But looking back, so I looked at the village justice system, uh, review and update, um, and just had some specifics to think about there. Um, one thing the committee is, a, a working group in the committee start, that's starting is address, going to be attempting to address or to bring recommendations regarding addressing disparate impacts on the poor of our, of our justice system. Um, I thought that should be added in to the maybe third column. Uh, Would you say that again? Addressing disparate, the disparate impacts of the justice system on the poor. Okay. And then um, I thought we should add in because it's become a big piece of the work that the committee's doing, which is data gathering around different areas. Um, that should be enlisted. And then I wanted to, on the second column of village justice system, the um, anticipated results. Stronger and more effective mayor's court. I just want to highlight, you know, we said, and has increased referral rate from YSPD. And I know I talked to Chris Connard about this. Um, you know, I think we need to think about, you know, what are we asking our police officers to do in terms of where they're sending our cases? And so I think that needs to be explored um, if we're going to have a mayor's court and if we think it's a way to bring more justice then it needs to be used as effectively and as, you know, as much as possible. So I, I want to see, um, you know, what role council can play. Of course, the chief can, is going to play an important role. We can take off, hire a permanent chief on our <laughs> list of goals. <laughs> uh, and I thought under housing we should put inclusionary zoning somewhere as a goal. Mm -hmm. And then I had put under the affordability this issue around utilities. So oh, those were mine. Great. <clears throat> Marianne? Okay. I'm going to start with infrastructure. It's my understanding that nationally we have an infrastructure crisis. And, and I think maybe given the history of our country, uh, you know, we just keep expanding west or expanding wherever we are, and we're, we're really into new things. And and we don't we don't really value the past particularly. We're always looking for the future. So in terms of Yellow Springs, I you know, we've had water main break, water main breaks a number this winter. We're going to continue to have the impact of climate change, and we have an old water, uh, underground water system. I, I don't know. Distribution. I mean, staff, distribution system. I mean, clearly staff knows more about it than I do, but I, I think in all of the, our new, pro th you know, the new things that we want to keep doing, I do think it's important that we make a strong commitment on infrastructure repair, maintenance. And, and while I appreciate that, Marianne, I think that um, probably the Ohio EPA is going to make us have a strong, oh, okay, okay. a strong commitment to um, uh, replacing a lot of that aging oh. infrastructure okay. because they have pretty much made that clear to us. Okay. Uh, uh, in terms of economic development, I would like to see our Economic Sustainability Commission focal, focus on localism. And by localism, I mean focus on what we have especially the kind of essential businesses that we have. I'll pull out Tom's Market as, as an example. What difference it would make if we didn't have Tom's Market, the hardware store, the drug store. Focus on, on contacting and working with local businesses to see how, we, how and if the village government can uh, support and enhance those businesses. To focus on businesses that uh, like Environment flight, where they take the, <coughs> the waste from one business and use it for another, which is all about local sustainability. So, having that focus on localism as opposed to, oh, we need to bring this business in or that business in. Because I think the more we identify with the kind of values that we have, the more we will be attracting 
the kind of businesses that we want to attract. For example, mm -hmm. the marijuana facility. <coughs> And I, I would put the broadband probably under economic development in terms of one of the issues. In regard to environmental things, the Environmental Commission, and it's basically Deward Headley, has developed a, a climate action plan. And, and council, we'd come to council, council said, yeah, go do, do it. Well, the, envir the climate action plan is less a plan than um, a sort of a model or maybe sort of like the comprehensive plan sort of like gee this is an area that would be good to do this and good to do that but when he really started working on it for example um, uh, encouraging less uh, less less driving of cars but, you know we couldn't really get people to start getting in there and getting a plan say, saying, well, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, because people are already busy. But people are already doing some of those things. So what we decided was to take the Climate Action Plan, and it should be on our website, and I don't believe it is. Um, and then when we see that someone's doing something, like the mothers with... Out front. Out front. front who, I don't know if they're still working on a sidewalk project or the sidewalk <coughs> project that just got finished safe route to school. The projects or in a lot of the climate, the uh, active transportation stuff, things that fit into that, we like stick it up. Okay, this group is doing it. So that would sort of meet, Judith, your suggestion of backing off environment, you know, not having an active environmental goal but just noting when these things rise up, putting them in place. And then lastly, housing. What I'd like to see as a goal for 2018 is that we develop a housing, I don't know if we call it, well, a policy or a housing plan. Mm -hmm. And that plan would include the kind of strategies, first of all, it would say this is what we want in terms of housing. And when I've looked at other communities, the kind of plans that they have almost always focus on affordable housing. And the reason why they focus on affordable housing is because the market does not provide affordable housing. So the only way to get affordable housing, unless you're in a disinvested community, which we are surrounded by, where you can go to Dayton and get a house for $30,000, Mm -hmm. well, we don't particularly want Yellow Springs to be that community. So the only way you can get affordable housing in a community like Yellow Springs is to have subsidies of various kinds. And that's why communities' housing plans focus on affordable housing. That's what the governments focus on. However, we want more, yes, we want affordable housing, but because we have a vibrant community and we want to have an even more vibrant community, I think our housing plan needs to include how do we have the mix of housing that we want. That mix includes clearly more senior housing, clearly more workforce housing, clearly more affordable housing, but not only affordable housing in the way it is usually looked at. So I think we want a more holistic plan <coughs> that includes various strategies and clearly a big strategy is, the, at least by the end of 2018, I would like to see some semblance of a plan or strategy for the glass farm. So, mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. Excellent. <clears throat> um, and these are all really good thoughts. Uh, <laughs> really good <clears throat> thoughts. Great. Really is that, great I, thoughts. I just felt like I was saying great too much tonight. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, no, I mean, very much in line with what I was thinking. Um, I kind of focused on two things when I thought about this. One was also infrastructure. Um, and I think there are, you know, not only with the active transportation plan, but we know that we've got to think about sidewalks and walkability in general. That's something that um, I think is, has become a priority for community members. And especially, again, as we think about our demographics. Um, and then the other thing, uh, I guess I'll, I'll focus on sort of under community development. And, and I guess that's where I think about um, 
you know, the, the, the fiber project. I mean, it's economic development too, but thinking about some of these community development projects, um, and now that we have a lodging tax and we have some of these other revenue streams, um, how we are going to direct that to some of these quality of life initiatives. Um, so overall though, I, I, well, and I guess I did wanna, you know, it sounds like we have interest in keeping um, our village justice system uh, in focus, especially with mayor's court and a few other initiatives. So as I kind of listen to everything, it, it occurs to me that I think we could focus on five to six goals. And I guess the other thing that I think about is uh, kind of Lisa's comments made me think of a, a structure where I think maybe a goal should still be an outcome of where we want to be. Um, so I think take the active transportation one. Um, I think that articulates sort of the outcome of what we want to have. Um, but I also like this idea of, in terms of what we can accomplish in 2018, being very focused on, you know, those pieces that will lead towards that outcome. Um, so again, you, you know, housing. Uh, I, I see a goal statement that's a little bit broader, but what Marianne said about that plan, action plan or whatever it is being the thing that we concentrate on for 2018. Um, but I think we need to have both of those things in our goals so that we don't forget what's the ultimate thing that we want to happen. Um, so, Patty, what are we missing? Um, I think you've covered pretty much most of the things that are up here. Um, I think the one thing that um, we need to remember to be mindful of when, when we're developing these goals and action plans, and this is something that we did talk about last year, is um, be mindful of staff time that is involved in getting us to that point. Um, because right now, for instance, um, you know, staff is incredibly busy. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's amazing what we've got in the, in the in the, how many irons we've got in the fire right now. And when we did the goals last year, if I remember correctly, we did kind of prioritize them so that staff knew where we were, where we needed to kind of focus our attention. See, I don't feel like we did, actually. I feel like we, and, and one of the things I think that happened that we want to control this year is that the priorities shifted at different times. Right. I mean, partly, I mean, with Cresco, right. it had to. Right, right? absolutely. Um, but, but I think that's, I, I mean, but I think what you're saying is right. And I, I think we can do a better job of articulating those priorities. Right, so obviously, I mean, every, pretty much everyone across the board here has mentioned housing. So obviously that is a primary goal. Um, we continue to have the goal of, um, and that will take that, let me back up for a minute. For instance, that will take myself, Denise, uh, to a certain extent, Melissa, um, uh, and, and to another extent, Johnny, when it comes to the utilities and where that lays and all of that. So now you've got four staff members that really need to at some point be involved in the housing plan. Um, the implicit bias and diversity training, which Kevin and I have talked about, um, that will involve the chief and his entire department, myself, and to a, an extent, everyone else will have that time. So um, it, sometimes you don't, you know, that's why we list these staff members over here. So when we're prioritizing the goals that council wants us to achieve, just w look over at that section and see how many things I'm involved in or how many things Denise is involved in or Melissa or Johnny or Judy or Chief. And just kind of keep in mind that we, you know, we have to do those things in addition to our daily, <coughs> daily duties. Um, but I think that the goals I think the infrastructure one is the one that's kind of flown under the radar for a long time, and it's coming to the top here that it's going to need a lot of attention. Um, that can actually tie in with the housing because any infrastructure improvements we make should be closely tied to the housing plans that we have and, and where we're going to put these different developments or where they could potentially go, so we have to keep that in mind. It also ties into the active transportation plan and the, and the walkability of the community. So a lot of these are gonna to tie together. And I think if we're careful to address them across all the potential spectrums when we're doing this, we may get ahead on a lot of these, so. 
Uh, great. So I wanted to. Um, I said I would show what we could do potentially for feedback on Facebook, mm -hmm. and then of course if there are uh, any comments from citizens. Um, okay, so I set up this little uh, group just called Village YS, and um, I wanted to show you one of the things you can do, which you cannot do on a regular Facebook page, but in a group you can set up a poll. And I just you know, kind of put up there, if you can read it, what are your, what are your priorities for 2018 Village Goals? I listed some different things um, just to kind of get an idea of the, you know, the, the tool. Uh, you will notice at the bottom, anybody could add an option. So, I mean, any, right now this is a public group, so anybody could add an option. They could also make a comment, just like you do on Facebook, to you know elaborate on some you know piece of housing that they want emphasized. So this is a format that people are used to on Facebook. Uh, our our community does pretty well with Facebook, so we could uh, potentially try this out. The other thing that is interesting, by the way, with a group is that you can upload a document. So right here, I just uploaded our goals document from 2017 um, so that people have that right there for reference. Um, and then they can you know, download it themselves. They don't need to find it on the, the website and whatnot. Um, so, I mean, it's not that sophisticated, but this is something that if we want to try it, and I will also add that you know, way back when we started our village Facebook page, I know there was a lot of concern about what was going to happen. My experience, and Patty, you're on there a lot, is I think it's been a really useful tool. Mm -hmm. I think people have been respectful. They've understood the purpose of our village Facebook page. And so some of the concerns that came up just really did not, you know, become a reality. And, you know, we also use it to identify when we have power outages or water main breaks. So. Um, I personally am not fearful of Facebook and, and you know what what we might get from it. I think it could be productive, but um, anyway. So that's that is an option. Um, I I actually know a lot of people that don't use Facebook. Right. So I like what you have there. That would be my main concern, and wonder if something like SurveyMonkey would be more. Uh, widely usable, I guess. Mm -hmm. Maybe in addition to, or in addition mm -hmm. to, right? Right. I mean, and we've all, we've done that in the past where we've had different options. I mean, we could even make little cards once we agree on what we're polling, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That could be out as well, and people could yeah. check boxes and add mm -hmm. comments. I think that you may also, though, if you do that, to let people know that you prefer they only answer on one of those particular sites, so that you don't get multiple answers mm -hmm. from the same person. Mm -hmm. Good point. I really like the idea of a poll on Facebook. Um, the, the only thing that I think might be important is to set expectations of the forum in terms of council person participation. Yes. Because of the sunshine laws. Sure. We can't all be weighing in and saying even thanks, mm -hmm. you know, thank mm -hmm. you for responding. So if we seem a little invisible in a way, it's because it's not a forum for public meetings. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a great point. And what we could do is we could make it really clear we're capturing as much information as we can get and then discussing it here. Yeah. So This isn't a discussion. Right. It, yeah, right. Not a discussion. Are we trying, is this, this is going to be part of the goal setting? Um, so, yeah, I think this would be, uh, in, in my mind, um, well, yeah. So I guess the question is, so are, is the next council meeting when we're going to finalize goals? So I just was trying to think about the time frame. Uh, by the way, I really like that you broke this discussion up. Uh, this has always been a really hard conversation <laughs> for council to be focused, and it's always been complicated. I feel like uh, having it in two pieces, it just gives people then time to, it gives us time to reflect and citizens t to hear to the extent that they're going to hear what our conversation was about. Right. 
Right. Um, well, what so I'm I do like that you broke it up. Yeah, and what I'm thinking re regarding that is, um, you know, like uh, uh, Karen did as our past president, she took all the information. You know, it was a one way compiled it, brought it to the next meeting for us to review and discuss. So I imagine that being our next step. And I'm also comfortable with uh, people working on the goals that they want to. And even if more than one person's working on a housing goal or whatever, I'm comfortable with compiling that rather than assigning them. Um, and then that, in my mind, would form what goes in the poll. Right, so based on you know that discussion and and sort of let's say we have a pretty good draft of what we're thinking for 2018 goals, on the 20th we put those out there, and you know we still have an opportunity to get input and reflect on um, things that we might not be thinking of. So, um, I, I'm sorry to add, you know I went first and I feel like I was pretty general. And I think we've become more specific in our goal discussion. Um, I'm still uh, reflecting on what uh, Chrissy Cruz said. And I want to acknowledge that when I heard her speaking about this, I saw not her, but dozens of people standing there. There aren't dozens of people in this room, but I've heard dozens of voices talking about utilities. And anytime you look at Facebook, and it's not, it's, the, I mean, these are genuine need situations. So I would like a specific goal somewhere in the one about affordability to say that we're going to take a very proactive and supportive stance somehow around utilities. Mm -hmm. I'd really like that to be included in the next round. Yep. Thank you. But I'm still confused at what, uh, when people weigh in, I mean, are we basing our prior? We're not basing our priorities on some kind of a poll. Um, I'm thinking. I mean, I, I mean, it would certainly uh, help us test our understanding of what the community wants. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then you know, ultimately, I mean, you know, we make those final decisions. Um, so when but, would we have that input, though? Would it so at the next meeting? Are we so next meeting? We're trying to kind of get a, 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 a kind of coalesce uh, what we have, go over it again, and then you'll share it to the community, and then we'll, at some point in uh, soon, right. it's March, then uh, right. finalize our goals. Right, and so I mean, to me, what it means is. Presumably on the 20th, we could have a pretty solid understanding of what we think the goals are that we should focus on. And then we have this, you know, and, and of course, any feedback, we want to continue to get feedback, you know, from now until, you know, uh, forever. Um, but this would be a good way if we need to refine, I think, to, uh, to understand, you know, what, what we maybe haven't captured. Um, and um, you know, and I do think our goals discussions have been sort of ongoing, but I, but I'm hoping on the 20th we can have that frame. <coughs> okay. Uh, questions or comments from citizens? Okay. And then, um, of course, Diane, we'd love it to be out there that we're we want feedback now. Um, and uh, but that process, which we can talk more about, it sounds like we're. Agreed that we might that we will try it. Okay. Yes, uh, please come up. Uh, uh, something I'd like to say is uh, uh, part of the problem I was talking about earlier was I had uh, low-income housing in Xenia, and Green Metropolitan Housing was aware that there's drug dealers living next door. They did not uh, refuse their voucher. And I asked the landlord if he was involved, and uh, that was probably a, a bad thing to do because he may have been involved because he would not evict them, even though he told me that the task force was watching the place. So uh, things like that uh, might be a concern because if you get a lot of low-income housing, then you're going to have a lot of people who are uh, 
may appear to be illegitimate, you know, like uh, the woman may have a job, but then the boyfriend will be dealing drugs, you know, something like that going on. So uh, that's something to think about because if you, you know, then it'll just be like, and a lot of people talk about urban sprawl or, or whatever it's called, like, you know, uh, I guess that's what it's called with the uh, development around the outside of town, but like if it keeps getting bigger, it's just going to be like any other city anywhere. Uh, same problems, it's going to look all the same. You're going to have all the same businesses. There's not going to be a, it's not going to be any different. It's just going to, you're going to drive down the road from Fairborn, Xenia, or uh, Springfield, and it's going to look all the same. Right. And that's an excellent point, and I, I think that's why those community conversations are going to be so important around housing. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Well, let's move into our boards and commissions discussion. And uh, Marianne, you're going to kick that one off? Yeah. Well. We have various documents that relate to commissions, and uh, Judy included those documents in this packet. So I'm looking at, and, and I'm not planning on going through all those documents. I'm just going to note them. We have the board and commission applicant process, guidelines for commissions and committees and boards, uh, role, board member roles and responsibilities, uh, human relations commission. Uh, that, ordinance for that commission as an example of, of, of all the commissions. And then also a list of who's on the commissions in their terms. So what um, Brian and I have done is had, had a conversation about things that we thought could still be changed. And then uh, after council discusses and agrees, to take the various documents that we already have and to the extent possible uh, con condense it into one document, at least one document that we could hand to a prospective applicant that would you know, have an example of the commission and their roles and responsibilities and the roles of the commissions, et cetera. So this two-page uh, summary of our conversation just highlights some of the things we talked about. So when I've been thinking about commissions, I have been thinking of ways to strengthen them, strengthen them internally within the commission or the board or the task force, as well as between council and, and the, the group. And so how to strengthen them? Well, I have made some suggestions that the clerk of council take on some more management of some things about uh, the commissions. And I've listed three, three things that could be options. And of course, the clerk of council can comment on this. But for example, having the clerk be the manager of when someone's term is up and notifying them and notifying the council liaison and and putting information on the website. So, so Judy is doing some of this uh, already, but to make this a clearer part of her role. Also doing more of uh, developing training modules that we do, uh, including training on Sunshine Law, and have some way so that uh, maybe the training would happen every quarter or something like that for, for new and for old uh, for people who've already been on. Uh, then the second item that's listed, uh, additions to commission roles and responsibilities. We've had some situations where it hasn't been clear to people on a commission that they are actually an extension of council. And uh, sometimes there's been a sense of they sort of gone off and done whatever they wanted to do. Sometimes council has made a request of a commission and they've ignored it. Uh, so some of the things that I've listed under here involve that. Then we've also had some issues of people on a commission making statements in public media that 
have been disparaging of staff, have been disparaging of fellow uh, commission members, and so some of the bullet items under that section are uh, behavior that we expect of commissioners as representatives of village government. Then the B under uh, number two, process for public disagreement. So if, if we're going to ask people on a commission to abide by a certain set of behaviors, there may be times that uh, a commissioner has a substantial disagreement with what's happening on the commission. And so what I've tried to do here is to spell out a process that that person, or it might be more than one person, can do to deal with their disagreement. Uh, you know, go to the council liaison first. If that doesn't work, go to the president of council. And then, you know, if they're not able to, uh, to uh, resolve their difference, of course, they can leave the, com they can resign because um, they just don't feel like they work there. And they may want to make a public statement, but this is requesting that if they do make some kind of public statement, that they acknowledge that they're doing it as an individual and the reason why they're doing it and they do it in a respectful way. Then C is grounds for removal from a board or a commission or a task force. Um, or n maybe not even removing someone, but, but having the liaison say, hey, what you're doing is not cool. So I think as liaisons, I, I have felt that I haven't had the backing to come in and say to a person, you know, when you put that on Facebook, that was not cool. Don't do it again. And do you see what the problem was, you know? Or, you know, you're supposed to be the secretary and you haven't been doing the minutes, you know? We need to talk about this. So it put, it, I think that we have to give liaisons backing to be more uh, proactive in terms of making sure that the commission is is uh, functioning well. And you know, sometimes there can be one person on a commission who, for whatever reason, just is not a good fit. And that person can really have a really a negative impact on the commission. So having the liaison have the authority behind that to say, to be able to step in and work with that person is important. Uh, then D is, uh, we've gone back, we've got, sort of gone back and forth about, so we have someone on a commission, they want to have another term, they're doing a great job, they're an integral part of the commission, do we go out and have a whole search process? Uh, or is, is it, can there be a way that we meet with the, the council liaison and alternate meet with them, say, hey, how's it going? You know, things are going good. That, that's sort of up in the air. How much, how much do we have to follow through when, when it's working? And if it's not working, then how do we deal with it? And that's what I have written in, in D. E is about family members on a commission and what I am saying there is council recommends that family members not be appointed to the same commission. And what I have said is recommends. Uh, so, you know, there could be uh, extenu extenuating circumstances that would, meet, would uh, uh, be reason to do that, but as a rule, it's better not to do that. Uh, three commission documents. Oh, I haven't. I don't, I've sort of shot my wad here. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it no says. <laughs> um, uh, well, this is, you said it at the beginning that we'd have a packet that oh, okay. basically lets you, you know, a new commission member has everything uh, yeah, that they okay. need. That, that the, the documents are organized and it's clear to commission members what's expected of them and how to go about doing things. Four is sometimes commissions have sort of run out of work for a while and people don't have to meet just to meet. Mm -hmm. So uh, that could be a decision that the commission could make. That could be a decision that council might make too, or uh, presumably with the commission. Um, and five is just reiterating, uh, I think, that, that the commission members serve at the pleasure of council. And 
that the liaison is that conduit. And it's an iterative process. Council may say to the commission, we want you to look at X. Commission, because those people have an expertise and or an interest, may know of something that they want to come to council. I mean, the Climate Action Plan was a good example of that, you know. Uh, came to council and said, we think that the village should have a climate action plan. So it got, there's a back and forth relationship that I think is, can be strengthened as in, and is important. And uh, then... And the last thing was just uh, we've got some housekeeping things to clean up. Like uh, we already agreed that we would remove the treasurer requirement. Um, thinking that it was better for Melissa to handle mm -hmm. um, yeah. the budgetary issues. Um, so, uh, could, could, yes. Can I say the one thing that I think possibly we need to think about adding here is a procedure for expenditures, and I don't um, know because it's kind of all over the board, and there have been a couple of issues lately with us being able to get um, purchase orders entered in a timely manner, and getting checks cut, and getting you know um, ordered items here. So. I think that needs to be maybe added that there's, if, if the commission wants to spend member money, that you know, here's how you go about getting that through the system as far as the finance system. Yeah, and right. that's be, not, you're not talking about the bud, a budget. No, I'm not talking about so the budget. Can, can you write up something for that? I, I can, or I can ask Melissa to do it. One uh -huh. of us can certainly do it. I mean, okay. it's not very complicated, but it's kind of been the ball's been dropped a couple of times lately, and we need to make sure before it gets out of hand that okay. mm -hmm. we get that. So. Okay. Kevin, did you want to? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know if Marianne just wanted to present or if you wanted to take some questions. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is a discussion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Well, gosh. <laughs> right. Well, um, item number two, third bullet, um, just thought we should include uh, village residents at large um, in terms of, uh, you know, you're saying uh, refrain from public statements that may be considered to be inflammatory, directory, et cetera, uh, in regard to village government, village staff, fellow commission members, and the work of the commission. I think we should extend that to, again, to village residents at large. In other words, commission members shouldn't be talking about Sally. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I understand what what it says and how important it is, given recent events and common knowledge, you know. But but I think it's worthwhile to make it broad. I mean, why not? Include? Well, that's significantly restricting, even more restrictive. Well, I, I mean, I'm not. I was just answering to why not. Okay. I'm not saying <laughs> okay. I disagree with you, but that okay. would be the reason. All right. Well, uh, so I'll move on. Just to, I think that's a thought. And then uh, second page, second page, item, s s uh, this is DE. Um, you say uh, council recommends that family members not be appointed to the same commission. And I wrote the question, is this clear? I think I know what you mean. Um, at first glance, I, I, I suspected that you meant that uh, liaisons, council members, and and should not have uh, be on the same commission with their family members. But what it no, says I is I didn't mean that. I meant okay. that we wouldn't, whether it's a liaison or just two people from the same family, not be appointed to the same commission. That, that, that's what it says. No, okay. So, but I don't really understand why. Well, the same reason that uh, that we are saying we wouldn't want a council liaison to be. I think when you have two members of a family, if I think there are two things. One, they have an opportunity to talk together and create a unified front that, in general, other mm -hmm. people. So in a way, it gives them more power. Mm -hmm. Then, if there's some kind of conflict, and they there's a tendency to get the roles between their commitment to fit being a family and their commitment to the uh, commission. But I mean, this is, you know, I'm, well, I'm not wedded. I'm not wedded to this. I, All right. Well, no, that's 
it just it generated discussion. Yeah. <laughs> so we are discussing. It's like okay. Lisa has I like the generality of that point. I mean, I, I, I like. It's actually something I hadn't thought about. Um, extending that to say, uh, two members of the same family wouldn't serve as just members on a commission, and I, I think it's a good point for the for those same two points that you, you make. Okay. Judith? Um, I wanted to comment on D, the renewal of commission terms. Mm -hmm. And I thought we had decided on this. We seem to be going around in circles. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and I think we should do what we had agreed to do in the past, uh, two months ago, uh, when we said if a person wants to be renewed, they go through the same process as everybody else. Mm -hmm. Because if you make a special exception, um, I mean, you may have reasons that you, you know, they might be great, and if that's the case, they go through the process, and maybe, again, somebody else applies who, you know, I mean, some of our great commission workers have been on commissions for years and years and years. Well, there might be a reason you want to change that. It makes it a lot harder on the liaison to say people take offense. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it's hard enough if you decide for some reason you have it that you do not want to renew them. But I just think it's an even playing field. Obviously, you're going to consider their service already. If they're a great asset, their chances are very great that they will be re. Mm -hmm. But I don't like making an exception, and then it forces the liaison to then, then they expect it. And they basically, the expectation is raised that, of course, or that you somehow are insulting their work or something. Mm -hmm. I would just rather everybody go through the same process. We did that library commission. Everybody wanted to reapply. Everybody was up. Everybody wanted to reapply. We got two new members because, you know, we put it in the paper. And it turned out, you know, we realized there was actually more space on the commission. Or we could have added on a couple of alternates. Um, no, it was actually nice to have those conversations for me, not no, not having originally appointed them. The way um, I read this, I'm sorry, I maybe interrupted you. No, that's all. I, that's my only thing. Uh, it, it seems confused to me the way it was written. I couldn't quite tell. Uh, you let them, they, you, it almost sounded like a somewhat abbreviated process that you would just go ahead and could potentially just go ahead and reappoint them and not. So it's a little confusing to me. I just think we should keep it all very the same. You know, everybody's treated the same even if they've been on the committee for a long time. Okay. Well, I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't I, say that. It didn't I think seem it, yeah, I think we I, I think we will be able to clarify it in the next document. Okay. So I I mean, to me unless there's any other feedback, I feel like we have enough to sort of put this into more concrete language. Yeah, sorry for um, that. And uh, I guess, are there any citizen questions or comments? Okay, well then let's move on to new business. And by the way, again, this will be continued on the 20th um, to uh, ultimately try to get this closer to completion. <laughs> um, so I had written that the first uh, item we put under new business was diversity around our village hiring practices. Um, Kevin, do you want to? Yes. So, um, you know, in discussion with, uh, and I may have said this in more than one venue, but, you know, what I've said is um, we may not be able to stem the tide, you know, of the village <laughs> becoming older and whiter and richer. And not that being richer is a bad thing, but the disparity in income is, a, is not necessarily good. <clears throat> but I think we ought to uh, be able to show a good faith effort um, in our intention to um, reach out to um, communities of color when it comes to um, our hiring practices and um, I know sometimes it's a struggle when you consider the cost of uh, advertising in, in, in different uh, places and different uh, newspapers and whatnot. Depending on the position, um, it's hard to ensure that you're getting information out to, to, to certain communities. But 
First of all, does everybody have uh, this voluntary self-identification mm -hmm. page? So, and Chris, do you have one? <laughs> Make sure. E well, it, it was an extra add-on, and I can hand you mine. I saw what you said. Yeah. So, you know, I've, um, again, to continue with the statement I've made, I would, I would like to say that we need to be sure that if we want to uh, be that excellent employer and, 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 and uh, welcoming and whatnot and, and uh, making opportunities for uh, different communities to be able to become employed by the village, we need to ensure that we're at least giving uh, different communities an opportunity to uh, apply uh, to positions that we have open. Um, then uh, ensure that, well, ensure that the applicant, that the postings are getting into their hands, uh, number one. Secondly, it, have some assurance that uh, people of color are applying for the jobs. And then thirdly, to the degree that we can, um, ensure that we are interviewing uh, mm -hmm. persons of color for various positions. Now, we can't promise jobs to people. You know, we, we want to be able to do our level best and be legal with respect to that. Um, so, you know, so there's, and I've heard that, well, we, you know, we can't know who's applied for our positions. Well, I mean, I've applied for various jobs on uh, online websites, and there's more than once, and I, I've done it so many times I don't even think about it. I mean, I'm not ever bothered by this, but there's this voluntary self-identification that's mm -hmm. part of job applications, and, um, you know, no one ever has to do it, and they, they, this one is an example from a, a, a local a, a business in Dayton uh, that says effectively, hey, you don't have to answer these questions, but whether you answer or not has no bearing on, um, Diane, would you like to see this? Since you don't have one, I'll, I'll be glad to give it to you. I've got it online. I don't... <laughs> so, sure. you look very interested in what I was saying. <laughs> 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 so I would give that to you. Um, so the point is, we could, as part of our job applications, say something like that. And I, and I guess, Chris, I, I wanted to make sure that you had a copy. Um, I mean, this is a large company in downtown Dayton. Uh, that does this, and so that first paragraph says we are an employer subject to certain government blah blah blah. Uh, guess my first question is, can we say that or something like that, um, so that we could go ahead and say, hey, you don't have to answer these questions, but if you want to identify yourself, and then these are all the federal government definitions uh, for, uh, of affirmative action categories, pick one of these, and to the degree that folks would pick, we wouldn't have a better idea of who's applying for a job. And Kevin, just as a matter of interest, we did formerly have these mm -hmm. on our applications. Um, and what happens is when they, when they do fill them out, those come off before those applications, they come off by the HR person and get filed. Mm -hmm. um, so they're not, they don't stay attached mm -hmm. to the application. Um, it, it's it's a method of it's a method of tracking how many minorities are applying for various mm -hmm. jobs and and that, but it's it doesn't stay attached to the application mm -hmm. as it goes through the process. Right, right. So and I understand. So I, so again, and I, I believe, and I my understanding of what you just said is, you know, if I'm evaluating resumes, I don't get to know this information, and and that's fair. Correct. You know, but but when HR has posted for positions, mm -hmm. I think HR needs to know, yeah, we got some people of <laughs> yeah. color to apply for this position, yeah. so and we've that, checked that box. Absolutely. And if we're and not, if we're not getting applications from people of color, I think we have not completed our job search. Well, and and, and that's simple enough to do. I mean, we can add that back. I don't have any objection so to that. we're not doing it now, but we formally did. Correct. Okay. Um, I don't have an answer. <laughs> I, mean, I don't like to give answers off the cuff. I'm mm -hmm. Is this important, and so I prefer to research it. But uh, you know, certainly, I don't know where you pulled the form off of. It was another Ohio company. Care Source. Mm -hmm. I mean, Care Source. Okay, uh, and, which is an Ohio-based company. So mm -hmm. I don't make the assumption that there aren't any issues with that. It's just mm -hmm. simply the methodology of what's done with the information and the way Patty described it that would provide the protection mm -hmm. and the process and maintain the integrity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, so. 
Um, I mean, I guess I will intervene uh, just in terms of managing the meeting. Um, I think this is a conversation we should continue. Mm -hmm. uh, what I would recommend is that we, in your next report, Patty, mm -hmm. manager's report, if you can highlight what the village is currently doing. Okay. Um, and then we can, and obviously we've got some, uh, you know, legal input that we need. Um, and then we need to drill down on what, what we can do more um, to guarantee uh, diversity. It, so. And I just as a matter of course, um, Lisa was going to ask um, a member of the 365 group to provide me with some websites mm -hmm. that would reach more, possibly reach more minorities. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's in process. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, and I will, well, and I'll speak for 365 unofficially as a member. Um, Another member of 365 has said that there are funds. No, so, for example, ZipRecruiter. I'll just, I'm not advertising for ZipRecruiter, but that's a, a website. I mean, it has certain fees. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be very expensive. Mm -hmm. But a member of the of 365 has said, well, we've got funds that we can put towards that expense, um, seed money, let's mm -hmm. call it. Um, I think uh, the village needs to have some skin in the game. Uh, but I think if 365 wants to do something, mm -hmm. I, 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 as a member of council would appreciate that yeah. but but I think again the village needs to yeah and zip, and zip recruiter was one that we looked at um, mm -hmm. for the last PD mm -hmm. uh, and we I think we did it but only because we got it free because it was pretty prohibitively expensive to do on a continuing basis no you pay for it okay 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 so we have some idea of what it could mm -hmm. cost and 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 again I'm not speaking of 365 I'm just repeating what I what I've heard. Um, yeah, well, it's so, good to know. Right. Well, uh, excellent issue to bring up, and um, let's see if we can't, you know, come back to it at our February 20th meeting, but no later than the March 5th meeting. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. So next we had the village policing guidelines. And again, I think. Uh, well, I do know that Patty and I talked about this, and she shared um, um, some thoughts of, about. You know, the the intention was that we've got the policing guidelines, um, and, and the posting that went out for the outreach community outreach specialist uh, or coordinator, regardless of the title, um, should have is my estimation. I think we all agree mm -hmm. that that job posting should have made some reference mm -hmm. to these policing guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, I think everybody who cares missed it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's nobody. Uh, at fault here. I think we all missed it. Um, yeah. And so, you know, lesson learned. It's my understanding that the current candidates have received prior to uh, being interviewed that they've received the policing guidelines. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> they know what they're getting into. Um, and I just think that's imp important, you know. Um, you know, and well, I won't go on. I don't, I don't want to pontificate. Yeah, total, but, totally agree. <laughs> and um, <laughs> And we're not going to miss that the next time. Right. Yeah. So, uh, also with respect to evaluation, uh, I suppose, and I, Brian, uh, Chief Carlson, uh, it's my understanding that you intend to pull out uh, the components of the policing guidelines and implement those or have those represented somehow in your evaluation procedures. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I just uh, wanted to add in here, um, you know, when we're advertising, you know, for our police department, since that those guidelines communicate, you know, the values of the community, um, it's important that they be a part of the actual job description in mm -hmm. some way, if there's a link or something, mm -hmm. so that the person who's considering applying, I just wanted to, you know, make. Yes. that right. statement it they shouldn't be hearing about it you know to the future uh, and I, I guess there there were some people who were quite concerned that you know we did all this work on the guidelines and then they weren't in the forefront of a new position and so I guess you know my request is that they be a part of all job descriptions if it's a, a link or or something. I, I don't know how that would be done. So right. I'll leave that to the staff. I mean, I don't know how the council feels, but 
Yeah. Absolute, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I mean, I, you know, I will say it, it's unfortunate with the four or so months that we worked on that job description that none of the groups brought it up. Um, but, yeah, I, I totally agree with that. It's got to be in there. So. Okay. Okay. That's all. What do you mean none of the groups? Um, the Justice System Task Force didn't raise the issue, oh. 365 Project didn't raise it, Council, staff, right. the PD, Talk none of us raised it the when we were working on that job description. So, um, but yeah, but we, that's a very important point. Right. Okay, and then we've got um, some new commission members to nominate. Lisa, do you want to start with Arts and Culture Commission? Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> so. Um, I, I actually have three wonderful people to bring forward for arts and um, culture. Do we ask for a motion and then I give some background? Uh, do you want to do all three at once? You can talk about all three and then we can vote on them. Okay. Well, what I, um, I'll be uh, making a motion for um, Nancy Mellon, for Kathy Moulton, and for Catherine Roma to be coming um, on board the Arts and Culture Commission. Second. Um, just to say a little bit about each of these people, um, Nancy Mellon's been very involved in the uh, Arts um, Commission for a long time. She uh, was very involved, obviously, with getting the banners hung. I think probably a lot of people know her. Um, she's also been a performance artist, so she brings a multifaceted point of view about the arts onto the commission. And uh, Kathy uh, Moulton, uh, also interested in arts and culture. She's been involved already. Um, she's a working artist involved in the artist cooperative, uh, involved in the gallery committee and the open studios uh, steering committee. A lot of people uh, know her for her wonderful work of uh, visual uh, depictions of the village with wonderful little animals <laughs> in it. So a lot of people know her. Um, another wonderful addition. And then a little bit different perspective is Dr. Catherine Roma, who's currently the director of the World House Choir. In addition to her work with the World House Choir, she's been the founder and conductor of four prison choirs. Um, she has four going on right now. So uh, she's uh, uh, very involved in social justice and how the arts are part of the a way that we can be activists. So um, I'm very excited to bring forward these uh, folks to join the commission. Great. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, Lisa, and I'll leave it to you for Economic Sustainability Commission as well. Okay, well, you know, I'm, go I'm going to be um, making a motion for a real stranger that no one's ever heard of. <laughs> Uh, so I'll have to give a lot of background uh, for Karen Wintrow to, <laughs> to join the Economic Sustainability Commission. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And then Mary Ann, I believe we have a Planning Commission nomination. Yes. Um, Ted Donnell has um, applied to be on Planning Commission, and Lisa and I have met with him extensively. Ted is currently on the Board of Zoning, and I'm not sure how, how many terms he's had. Judy, do you know? I would say three, but I really well, they're five-year terms. So yep. If he's in his third term, he's been on for over 10 years on Board BZA. So he would be going off BZA to be on Planning Commission. Ted, well, I think I don't need to say too much. Ted is a local architect. He has been in very, he's been involved as a volunteer in a number of village projects and would bring uh, need a, needed expertise to the planning commission. Mm -hmm. So I, Lisa and I would like, I would like to nominate Ted for the planning commission. Second. All those in favor? I have a quick oh, question. Yes. Is he a full member now or is this Ted, an alternate position? Ted would thought. be a full member because mm -hmm. Uh, Matt Reed is going off, and is it a, with a AJ is the alternate. Is alternate and wants to remain an alternate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay.
manager's report. What? We don't have these. I have these are the these ones. haven't been interviewed yet. Okay. Um, okay, I'm just gonna go over a couple of things very quickly, um, and you can read the rest of my report. The guidelines for village policing. I did meet with Lisa, and um, there are a couple ideas to get this out into the community a little bit more. Um, uh, posting the guidelines on the website and in a couple of different places on the main page as well as on the police department page which I've already asked that be done. Um, the uh, display in the lobby of the Bryan Center, um, there's that glass case down there that for quite some time has had the same display in it and we're going to be changing that out uh, and changing it over to the police department. Uh, Chief has a wonderful, wonderful idea for uh, the dispatch window that will list the four primary um, categories of the village policing uh, guidelines um, that will go up on that window for everyone to see. And then since I finished my bullet points on the H&A today, <laughs> I'm going to start on the trifold pamphlet hopefully tomorrow um, to put the full village policing guidelines in the tri trifold. And then and I just wanted to mention yeah. this as another possibility, what we did for the uh, right. um, street musician and, thing. And Lisa has asked 365 to um, bullet point the guidelines down so that we can fit them on a plaque and on one of these cards. Great. So that's another idea as well. Yeah. Um, so you noted that the Cresco closing is in there. Judy, can you pull up that picture? Um, the Cresco closing is in there, uh, 8.226 acres. Um, the check in the sale amount of $163,613.85. Um, that's because we had to prorate some uh, taxes on that property. Um, so it was, it's a little, if you multiply it out, it doesn't come out to that. It comes out to a little bit more, but that's why the difference. Um, and that did go into the general fund, but once council decides where they want it, it can be, a, a, we can do a supplemental appropriation to move it. Okay, so Judy is frantically trying to find the crosswalk signs. Um, I've been working for some time with um, the Active Transportation Committee and the Police Department to try to figure out a way to get some flashing crosswalk signs at various places in the village. Um, the, the locations are listed there in my report, but essentially, um, oh, there we go, cool. So if you look at the second one from the left, um, it's solar operated, it has a push button, when you push that button the four lights that are on the sides and the top um, will flash to alert the oncoming driver that someone is in the crosswalk. Um, and we do have a problem with the sandwich board signs consistently getting run over. I mean, last year somebody dragged one all the way down to Young's. Um, so uh, this is, I've, I've checked the prices out on these. And for the push button ones, for a set of two, it's $5,152. So if we want to do this, my suggestion is that we apply for an ODOT grant to do it. Um, but I don't want to apply for a grant without council's approval to do so. Um, it is a 90% um, grant with a 10% match through ODOT, and these would qualify. So if you want me to move so forward. So they're for the cross, the, the walk, the crosswalks. Correct. And, and, and when I say $5,000, it's for a set of two. So there's one for each direction at that particular crosswalk. Um, and so we had the, I think it was five different intersections that I noted there um, that Chief and I came up with and that Active Transportation noted when we were doing, started work on the complete streets plan last year and we're doing our walkthroughs. Um, so, um, if that's okay with council, I will move forward on that. Yes. And yes. very quickly, a reminder to you that you must judge a chili cook-off on February the 16th. <laughs> so, everybody is very excited about this. Awesome. I, I had a, a comment about your report. Mm -hmm. um, there was a point in it about the pool fees. The, uh, that's actually Mayor, uh, Melissa's report. Melissa's report. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll wait but for yeah, and then my end of year report, mine and Melissa's, we we co-authored oh, this um, for 2017 is in there, so you can see we did a heck of a lot last yes. year. Yeah. Very um, impressive. So, um, and that's in addition to the daily stuff that we do. So that should wow. go on our website, I think. Yeah, um, definitely. 
You so can put that on the website, Pat. Um, or have I, I, Ruth Ann. I, yeah, I can ask Ruth Ann to do it for me. Yeah. Cool. So, um, and now. So you're going to do uh, uh, Melissa's? I, 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 meant, I, I meant Facebook, I think. Yeah. Or both. Yeah. I'll, I'll put it on Facebook. Um, so uh, Melissa's report is is um, pretty self-explanatory. It talks about the two new funds that we started down the road to create tonight, as well as the lodging tax update. She had um, <laughs> she had one person come by um, and talk to her um, about that. So uh, Lisa, what is your question about the pool fees? Yeah. So I mean, I I certainly understand that <laughs> maintaining a swimming pool is an expensive proposition. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was concerned when I read that uh, we are look, may have to look at increasing the fees. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's really important that we consider affordability, particularly for something that we have in the village that is important to young families and people with, with children. Mm -hmm. I really think more, you know, I just really think it's important that we try to avoid that. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I also just wondered if there's other options out there. For example, um, at one point in the Yellow Springs Community Foundation, there was a, a donor that had set aside money um, for swimming lessons. Mm -hmm. And and I mean, it was, it was someone who was really passionate about swimming. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what the status of that fund is. But I, um, again, I, I, I understand that it's expensive, but I would want to encourage us to not raise the pool fees. Well, and we do have the Swimming for Everyone program, mm -hmm. which is for folks who come in and, and get the fees, at a, get the passes at a discounted rate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we will continue that. And we were asked um, last year if, if when we when we talk about this year, this this year, um, that we um, include a an adult plus one, mm -hmm. because currently there isn't an adult plus one. There's a single, and then there's a family, and um, so we the the new fee structure would include that. So, um, and I do understand I do understand what you're saying. It is the only public pool uh, left in Greene County. Um, and so we really want to keep it open, but we haven't ra raised the rates um, in six years, and everything is consistently going up. Mm -hmm. So we took it back in house. We've saved quite a bit of money taking it back in house, but um, we really, we really need to think very seriously about raising the rates. I, I just I'm wondering if there's other sources right. of money other than going to the community. Yeah. So, for example, the community foundation mm -hmm. for a grant. The lodging uh, tax. It's something. Mm -hmm. uh, just not passing it on yeah. to, to people. Let them save that money to pay their utilities. Well, and, and we, can certainly, we can certainly think about that if council's willing to, um, I mean, because it would have to be something that is designated on a continuing basis to support the pool. I think we need to know what the infrastructure, you know, Those estimates are, yeah. are mm -hmm. and yes. then we can start to think about it from there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I definitely, go ahead, June. Yeah, I was just gonna say, um, you know, there's a big commitment to the swimming pool, you know, keeping it open. And, mm -hmm. and, um, and so yeah, it would be good to hear in more detail what the need is, and then think about how we can fund it um, and in a way that's not going to dissuade. We don't want young people sitting at home because their family can afford a, a, right. a, a ticket. So we do have this swimming for all uh, program, right, which I think it's really important that we have it very well publicized, yes. so that people know about it, um, and that's for people of, of lower income who, and I'm not quite sure how they qualify. So that's an important piece also. But yeah, I think we should look at it, and I love the idea of trying to find some other possible possible places. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, anything else? Uh, oh yes. My name is Florence Randolph. I just wanted to know, is there a tiered um, um, pay system for the pool, um, village um, residents, as opposed to the people from the outside paying? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, Chief Carlson. Oh, anything else from no, the no, witnesses? Okay. That's it. Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Here. <laughs> Good 
Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, the police department, we are pleased to announce a couple of things not on this that have been added. I'm not sure was advocating uh, Miranda cards, but I have those in the works. Thank you. Awesome. English and Spanish. And I think it would be fun, too, for officers to memorize <laughs> both versions. <laughs> um, also, the uh, guidelines, which are near and dear to me, I want to let you know that though they weren't included in the round of, of our last pool of candidates for officers, they were discussed in the interview. Um, but we will continue to uh, create and, and have those grow as how we use them. We're in the final stages of hiring two full-time officers. Um, we have three potential candidates, two for full-time, one for part-time. So we are uh, in the background stage at this point, hoping that those uh, will come through. The police department, together with the village manager's office, uh, will begin the interview process Wednesday for our community outreach specialist. I believe we have six uh, qualified applicants. Very excited about that. Oh. We're also in the process of creating our detailed and specialized complete policy manual, as you know. Uh, Sergeant Knapp's been diligently working with Lexapol and the Ohio Collaborative to ensure we will be compliant within the state of Ohio regarding our policing policy and yet specific to the guidelines of the village. As you know, Lexapol is a detailed comprehensive policy solution. It gives the department current and vetted police policies that are tailored to the needs of the community and the agency. Uh, they are best practices from Ohio. Not only does this solution provide for solid defensible, defensible policies that can help protect the village from civil liability, but it also helps protect our citizens by describing clear and concise guidelines for officers to use while performing their duties. Lexapol also requires that officers complete monthly training bulletins to ensure understanding of how policies should be applied to a given situation. This helps build the officer's confidence in their understanding of the appropriate application of policy. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. I have a question. The, um Monthly training bulletins, are those pushed by Lexapol or? There's a menu of wide variety, a menu that I'll be able to hand pick. So we can say, for example, tailor uh, implicit bias, um, those kinds of things. Right now, to be quite frank, that is kind of a, a, a hot sales topic, if you will. So Patty's been very helpful, and, and we're trying to find some real training that's not the you know overpriced kind of condensed version because it's popular language. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we're uh, in the process of researching. Okay. But, but to answer your question, yes, we can tailor those, and the officers can complete you know one a day. They can do thirty within a month. Um, we have some options. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's Thank you. Right. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Well, we'll be talking more. <laughs> um, okay, Chris. All right. This will be short because we've got to end on time. Uh, it, 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 this is a this is award season, right? Uh, I don't get to do this very often, and this may be a first in the history of the village. Um, but uh, I'm going to hand uh, to Brian, as president of council, the Cresco closing binder. <laughs> um, there was uh, quite a bit of work uh, that went into that process, um, given the timeline that we had, everything that we had to do. Um, in particular, the, the people on the village staff who really should be commended are uh, Denise Swinger, uh, Johnny, Burns, and, and Patty, um, and of course Karen and, and, and Brian were, were the liaisons in that process, but truly all of council and, and the community for seeing this through. Um, you know, I, I tracked this from afar uh, because of what was going on in the state, and um, it's no accident that the village was the type of place that a company like Cresco would want to come. They demonstrated corporate responsibility, a willingness to partner and be a part of the community. And uh, so it's with a measure of pride that I say congratulations to the village for getting that done. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. All right. Judy. 
Okay. Just pointing out, we have seen a just a flurry of public records requests the last few weeks, um, and those take have taken up a great deal of staff time. I would say in the last several weeks, about 15 hours um, among any number of departments, uh, just pulling together a couple of different public records requests, and we're not even close to completing those at this point. Um, uh, I would like to note at Council's last meeting, Board and Commission representatives were selected, and I had thought that the alternate to the Greene County Regional Planning Commission should be a staff member. That is not the case, and that person does need to be an elected official. And at that time, Marianne McQueen had offered to be the alternate, and I, I'd just like to ask whether she's still willing to do so, yeah. and if so, I'll communicate that on. Great. Okay. 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 That's it. I, I have a question. Do yes. you, I know you spend a lot of time with public records. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, sometimes I'm sure that it's a very legitimate request. Someone is doing some research or has. I also sense that sometimes it's a, a way of sort of getting back at the village or getting back at government. Um, and I won't ask you to answer that question, but is there any way to? Um, to deal with that kind of situation is one, and two, can, do we charge? We cannot charge for anything other than the, the literal cost of the paper or the copy that is on the paper or the DVD or the flash drive. You cannot charge for staff time. So, so I, I mean, somehow or other, it does not seem right <laughs> or fair to be at the mercy of someone who has some kind of ax to grind. Well, it's sort of like lawsuits, you know? I mean, there are folks who have lawsuits and, that for frivolous reasons because they can do so, and, and in other cases, lawsuits serve a very good purpose in, in helping Yeah, I know, but and, people pay. If someone's going to have a lawsuit, then they're going to be paying their attorney. True, this but that's, that's why, I mean, that, we're at the mercy of, of Sunshine Law, really, which says everything must be open and above board and available uh, at any time that anyone requests that information. We, we just have, there is no recourse. You, you simply provide what's asked as cheerfully as possible. It's, well, it's part of the cost of doing local government business. Um, but, I, but I think you raise a good point that there is a cost. So, um, okay. Future agenda items. <clears throat> two things I know we need to have on there is part two of the goals discussion, part two of the boards and commissions discussion. We have some continuing discussion on housing. <clears throat> um, I mean, I wonder if the next, uh, what is the issue of the forums, but there's also inclusionary zoning. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I anticipate that. There will be housing probably at every okay. council meeting. Okay. Because I had, here. you know, I had mentioned once a month, but if 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 yeah, it's absolutely. both meetings every month, great. And can I subsume that under one topic? That's okay to just put the housing in it. Yeah, and we can we'll put the, the items that will yep. be under that. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then, as I stated at the beginning of the meeting, I would like at least an action plan. Mm -hmm on the utility roundup. Mm -hmm. All right. I wrote, okay. I wrote a note. Um, anything else? Uh, diversity in hiring, how, oh, that's uh, village manager follow-up in, mm -hmm. in report. your report, okay. And then we have um, resolution in support of 50-year anniversary of Scenic Rivers. Yep. Yes, and I think that's all I had. Okay. I have something that may need to be pushed out you know, quite a while because I know how things are so busy. But I, I would like to discuss um, some ideas I have about having a finance committee of council. And um, my idea there is that um, the goals that we have and ideas that come up affect the uh, expenditures of the village. Mm -hmm. And we also have aspirations to help reduce the burden on our community of cost. And I think that it would be a good idea if there was a, a committee of council that could both look very pointedly for opportunities to save money 
and then think about how that money might be diverted to achieve some of our other goals that come up during the year, not related to the budget setting every year. So uh, that may not make all f full sense, but um, I think I'd like to start to talk about um, a fi that kind of a finance committee of council. Yeah. Let's put it on March 5th and see um, where we're at, but I, I do think that's an important discussion. Okay, okay. And also, um, revolving loan fund, we can move to March 5th. And uh, I wonder, too, about the taser policy uh, resolution piece. Is that, I, we had that as a placeholder. Does that move down, or do you want to hold that there? Um, well, Ellis, Ellis has been sick, um, and so I'm not sure if we're going to be ready to come back. Uh, he and I need to meet. Right. It, it, it will probably move forward, but... Um. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask the question, because I wanted to have a conversation with Lisa about JSTF becoming a permanent commission, and um, I don't know if there's any, I guess I could just, just a question of, you know, if we would want to make that recommendation, we just bring that, put that onto the agenda council. Yeah, I mean, so I guess we have two choices. I mean, One is... Discussion. I think it would have to be a little discussion. Okay, because we could do it when we report out on commissions, which we will okay. do on the 20th, but if you want it moved up, just let me know. Okay. To another and then, spot. you know, we talked about utility assistance, you know, the kind of... Uh, and I don't know, is that on our goals? Or... I've, I've I recommended put, that as a specific goal, or okay. part of okay. a sub, cool. at least a Because I had it written here, too, as something I want to make sure we didn't lose mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Okay. I recommend it. be under the goals. And so related to that, just to close that loop, whatever language uh, you guys have for the goals, get to me by February 14th, Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. And then that way um, I can put it all together for the packet, since Judy will need that on Thursday. Okay, and uh, if there's nothing else, um, we do have a short executive session, so I will entertain a motion to move into executive session, and then we can take a quick break. So moved. Second. Okay, and you do need to state the reason for entering executive session. Oh, thank session. you. Uh, can you read that out? So I um, understand that you are making a motion to enter executive session for the purpose of the discussion of potential litigation and discussion of compensation and other terms and conditions of a public employee? That is, in fact, true. Okay. Um, and that was Krieger. I second. Okay. Yes. Okay. And we do a roll call for that? You do. Okay. Um, Could you call the roll, please, Judy? Indeed. Housh? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Hempfling? Yes. Stokes? Yes. Krieger? Yes. Okay. And is and this with the solicitor present? Yes. Thank solicitor you. present, please. Okay, so yeah, if council needs a quick break. Thank you, everyone. I'm on that. Yeah. Thank you.